a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit the chamber. So by left, you'd go through those double doors, turn left, down the flight of stairs and outside of the building. Or perhaps the best way for you is to exit through the double doors in the rear of the chamber. In either case, once you're outside of the building, please walk a safe distance away from the building. Secretary, please take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Elizabeth Ballard. Here. Charles Ladd, absent. Um, Nicholas Fakus. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Uh, Linda DeGray will be sitting in uh, for the absent commissioner. <coughs> Staff reports, town attorney's report. Any questions uh, from uh, concerning the town attorney? Hearing none. Hold on. Um, I'm sorry. sorry. Hearing none, you move on. Okay. Zoning enforcement officer, Roger. We don't have <clears throat> we don't have a report tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Approval of minutes. I guess is August twenty uh, fourth. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of August 24th, 2017. Second. Motion's made, second. Any additions, errors, or omissions? Go ahead. Um, I have um, some additions on page two. The second paragraph down, it says Chairman, Chairman Duran asked whether anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application. Nobody came forward. We didn't show that the public hearing was closed. So that wasn't referenced there. And then actually the next um, public hearing down, again, we didn't do that as well. We didn't say that the public hearing was closed. So I think it's important we note that, that it was closed. On the next page, we did do it. So I just consistency and make sure it's in the record. So and that's it for me. Thank you. Any further? I had several along with the same uh, the, that was just mentioned, the uh, in places where, uh, let's see, I get my thoughts here. What was it you, oh, I, where the moment, where I call the offices, it should be mentioned I called three times, not just I called, because legally I'm required to call three times, and if you don't mention it, so that, and I, that's several places in, in those minutes. I won't go through each each one. I know it's on page three. Uh, page three, the one, two, three, four, fifth, sixth paragraph down. I asked, uh, and and there it would go. I asked three times whether anybody else would like to address the commission, but it's got to go in that I've asked the three times. Uh, Page seven, I have no notes. Let's see what's there. No, it's okay. It's the same, same type of thing. Oh, I'm sorry, page eight. The next to the last paragraph, Chairman Durham stated the motion would have to state, there's a B in there, it's the typo error, I guess. Anything else? Hearing none, all in favor is amended. Linda? I no? abstain. Okay, one abstention, six, six, four, one abstain. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, with your indulgence, so there was a couple of people who were, weren't here the last time, and this is Elizabeth Boulay, who is the going to be taking minutes um, on the go forward, so. Okay. okay, on uh, page, uh, I'm sorry, uh, October 5th, I believe, is the next one, right? 
Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of October 5th, 2017. Second. Motion is made. This is seconded. Any uh, errors, additions, or omissions? Yes, on page two, um, first paragraph, it says alternate commissioner Higley. Yeah, I picked up on those too. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. yeah. She's seated and so. We can't get used to her being there, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> we don't love you, Ginny. Just, I can't. And that was about it. Okay. Anyone further? No, same comments as uh, ask anyone would like to speak, and again, it has <clears throat> asked three times, and they're on several pages. I won't go through it. Anyone further? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. <coughs> oh, two abstentions. You're slow on the hand. I wasn't here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> five and two abstentions. But you can still vote for him, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Let me have my fun the last okay. few Okay. <laughs> Public participation at this point in the meeting, Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in the town of Enfield from anyone who's present, provided that you may not discuss any matter of business at this time that is Elsewhere on this evening's agenda, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Is there anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call to address the commission under those conditions. Okay, then we'll move on. Bond releases, we have none. Roger, we taking care of all those? Um, yeah, there were no pending uh, bond release other than the uh, um, mulch place that we're still waiting on particular okay. information. Uh, old business, public hearing 2878, 16. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, maybe under bond release, uh, an, a matter did come up. Um, and that is on um, the Shaker Heights um, um, subdivision. Um, the present, um, the, the company that's doing this phase two um, wanted to know if the bond that was put up by the previous owner of the site for phase one for soil and erosion control could be transferred to um, to them, um, the procedure has always been that the original applicant asks for the money back, is inspected that way, make sure that it's been done on phase one, um, and then the the new uh, owner posts their own bond. So I'm just reporting that that that's how we did inform them in case the commission had any difference of opinion on that. Finance wouldn't uh, release it to anybody other than the name that was on the original right. paperwork, so it couldn't be done. We had discussed that. Even if we, uh, you know, wanted to. Okay. Uh, now, 2878, 1654 King Street. Applicate, uh, Secretary, please take the roll. Charles Duren. Here. Elizabeth Ballard. Here. Charles Ladd is absent. Nick Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Uh, Linda DeGray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. The applicant here.
before you get started, our requirements ask for a level A plan, and I see you're giving us a D. What's the excuse or the reason? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, Dana Steele, professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates, our offices at 1 Shoham Road in East Windsor. Uh, we have submitted a, a, a Class D uh, a plan, and we've requested a, a waiver of the A2 uh, requirement. Uh, the reason is because uh, we're not proposing any improvements. This is strictly a, a, a change of use a a application. Uh, there's a few minor items that were things that we're going to be removing uh, from from the site, and we're going to be doing some. But as far as we're not expanding, we're not we're not uh, um, uh, doing anything. Uh, 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 significant in the site. It's really just changing from one use to another, uh, and and that's um, I think consistent with how you've handled uh, that, um, uh, applications in the past for this site. Uh, most of the other applications did but not have the, an A2 survey. There's been a lot going on since this one was done. This sure. Was, uh, the, so um, this two, the last day two was done. I don't know what's the date. We did give um, a proposal to uh, the applicant, the industrial diesel and drive line, who's moving into one of the uh, one, one of the, the, the buildings on this on this property. Uh, and but the, uh, the the cost of that of that A two survey is uh, between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. So, considering the uh, the scope of, of what's being proposed, we're requesting. A, a, a waiver of that requirement. One of the things that, that um, uh, uh, staff uh, looked at when, when evaluating this request was uh, uh, the presence of an, of, of an existing A2 survey on, on, on file al already with the town, and there is one that's on file with the town. There is, uh, but what's the date on that? That's what I was looking for. Uh, it, was a, it was approved in 1985, uh, um, signed in 1986, but the site hasn't changed. I mean, it's, it's well, been there's been a lot going on and uh, on back and forth there. But there's a pellet. There's a pellet. Uh, there's been maker. a lot of use changes, yes, but not a lot of changes to the site plan. Uh, not, not not changes to parking. Not changes to the layout. It's the same site that it's been really for. Uh, the, the owner pro uh, purchased the property uh, 20 years ago, and it hasn't it hasn't changed uh, uh, um, significantly in that in that time. Well, so it's essentially it's accurate. It's a, it's it's a it's accurate depiction of what's what's there today, uh, and, and considering uh, the limited nature of what's being proposed, that's why the waiver is being requested. Well, the waiver would be up to the total commission. That's not mine, but sure. You have. Daniel, why couldn't you have just used the original one and modified it? We did. We did. It's a. It. it uh, we took the the, uh, the 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 86 plan and we and, and we copied it. But we can't stamp it at a, with A2 without without doing all all of the research work that that, that they did. Uh -huh. So you can't you can't just stamp some someone else's plan. Uh, and that and that surveyor no longer uh, is around. Okay. Go I'm sorry. Then that. that, that. So that no, I appreciate that. It, so that the, that, that uh, is uh, probably the first, knows. the first or, or order of business a after my presentation. You'll have to <laughs> cons consider that that waiver, um, and, and and then the rest of the application. So, shall I begin? Sure. Yes. yes. <clears throat> this is a, an a application for an industrial di diesel and drive line. Uh, it is uh, they, they they are a. Um, uh, construction equipment uh, repair business and they would like to locate on an existing building on, on this site. Uh, we've also modified our application to include uh, approval of all the existing uses in the site as as was mentioned there's been there's been uses that have come and gone uh, and so the uh, intent is to is to bring everything uh, um, uh, up current with, with 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 what what is there and so we've done that uh, primarily by uh, providing this this layout and I've, I've colored it up just with regard to the um, some some of the the, the key key issues with this, this application but uh, this property fronts on King Spring, uh, King Street uh, Route 5 as well as Depot Hill Road it's a corner parcel uh, and it actually uh, bounds uh, I-91 on the uh, uh, west side of the property uh, there is a, a, a primary building here which is a two-story office building uh, and 
and there are uh, numerous tenants in that in in, in this uh, in, in this space here. There's a smaller parking lot in the upper level here and at the corner of the site, and then there is a uh, a, a larger parking area down in the, in, in the lower portion of the site. The site has a, a number of, of uh, existing curb cuts. Uh, there's one, two, three on Depot Hill Road and one, two on, on uh, uh, King Street. And uh, there, is, there are two other uh, main buildings on the site. This is a, this is a uh, uh, encl enclosed co covered st uh, storage area uh, and this is a garage. Uh, a completely enclosed garage at the at the end near Depot Street, and this is a larger uh, garage building uh, that um, was previously occupied by uh, one of one of one of the tenants uh, called Winding Brook, and and they're a trucking company. Uh, they have a fleet of of trucks, and that's the vehicles that uh, you see uh, the tractor trailers that are parked parked in the back are, are theirs, and um, and they use this garage space for repairing their their own vehicles. Um, as, as a result, uh, they did not require a, a, a DMV permit uh, because they were only repairing their own vehicles. It wasn't a business repairing other people's vehicles. Industrial Diesel, however, wants to uh, re repair other motor vehicles. That's why they need uh, um, not just approval from this commission, but also go to ZBA a a after this for a location permit for, 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 for that use. Um, so uh, the... the uh, the, the site um, uh, uh, is sloped from from King from King Street uh, down to to the back. This is at, uh, in this back area is much lower, and this back area is partly pavement, partly gravel. Uh, to the to the north is gravel, and and it's uh, uh, used for uh, for truck parking and outside storage. And so, uh, you're, you're, you've recently adopted uh, a new outside storage regulation, which which provides uh, more guidelines and, and, and limitations to, to what, what can be done with outside storage. And so I've attempted to demonstrate that uh, this plan conforms with uh, that, that requirement. Uh, we have a calculation uh, below the parking area at the, at, at the bottom of the page showing that, that, that we meet the 20 percent uh, maximum based on these orange areas here on the plan. Um, in addition, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the applicant uh, has uh, proposed uh, to uh, there's 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 a fence that runs along the property line here, and, it, and at one time this area to the to, to the east of this of this display of this display area was um, uh, was, was gravel and in, in, in outside storage, uh, but it's since become overgrown, and it's actually developed into a very uh, thick buffer, a, a, a thick screening, and. Uh, I, I, I know that the property owner has spoken with uh, the, the, the neighbor who lives here. This, is, um, this property is bounded to the north by two parcels that are zoned R3, R33. So uh, uh, your, your regulations require a 100-foot buffer uh, along that, that, res that residential boundary. So that's shown by this yellow, this yellow line here on, on the plan. And as, as you can see, there's, uh, there's a cell tower in the back corner that's, that's within that buffer that was approved in 2000. Uh, the existing site site driveway coming in is is, is in in that buffer, and uh, as as well as uh, right right now there uh, one of the tenants who is um, federal rent offense it's is on it's on the, uh, uh, the, the the list of of uses there on the parking calculations. One of the the, the uh, tenants rent offense stores their their um, chain link fence materials. They stack them up. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in stacks uh, in, in, these, in these two linear areas. And uh, one of those is, is within the buffer. The other one is out of the buffer. The other one's in the buffer. And I know that that's one, that's one of the issues that uh, um, the staff has indicated that we need to address. And so um, uh, we're uh, pre pre prepared to do that. That wasn't clear to us when, when we met with staff before, but it's clear now uh, that, 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 that this this uh, um, need, needs to be moved. <clears throat> the, the applicant also proposes to re remove some of the pavement uh, with, with, within that buffer in, in this area where it's closest to uh, the, the, the residential property line. I believe this, uh, this property owner was, was here at, at, at the last meeting and spoke uh, that he was happy with the existing buffer and conditions, but nonetheless, um, uh, the, uh, the applicant is proposing to remove some pavement and plant some more 
pines in, in that area to make it even better. Uh, and so that's shown in this, in, in this uh, striped area here. So all, all, all of this, this green line here is existing vegetation that's, that's obviously going to remain. And this is going to be proposed uh, ad additional plantings in this, in, in this area. Um, <clears throat> so I think uh, what, what I'd like to um, do then is uh, before, before um, take co questions, unless you want to interrupt me, feel free to, um, is to go through staff's um, proposed resolution uh, and, uh, and just uh, clarify a few things or just uh, uh, comment on them if I, if Sta I could. Staff had several uh, things. Do you want to? Can I, can I go through each of them? Or? Right, I, that's what I was just going to ask you to do. Unless, Roger, you'd like to take the lead on that. I didn't, whatever you prefer. Well, um, I don't know how you want to do this, Mr. Chairman, but um, there is some, just some general history of the site that I probably should put into the record for the benefit of those commissioners who weren't here over the last six months as we've dealt with this site three or four times. So you want me to do that afterwards? And Right. Okay. I, I, he, he, uh, I asked well, I, him I to, would I would yield back to you Dana there were seven comments that were in your uh, October 6 letter to uh, well right right now there in the draft resolution there was eight a B C D and E and um, I added a couple more today after visiting the site um, so maybe I'll just put them in and then you can comment on them Sure. Um, so there's a couple of inoperable trucks that are out there and inoperable cars. And so, so just su the suggestion was that we add a condition that there be no storage of inoperable or run registered vehicles or trucks on the site. And then there is a tractor trailer, uh, um, not the front of the thing, but the actual trailer that's being used for outdoor storage. They've actually built stairs up to it, and it sits in the parking lot. Um, so we ought to put a condition in there that tractor trailers will not be used for storage. And then the final thing I think the commission ha should consider is when you wrote your outdoor storage regulations, and this was something that Commissioner Higley pointed out, um, is you didn't put in a height of the storage. So uh, this is the first opportunity that uh, the commission is actually reviewing outdoor storage or maybe the second. Um, so maybe you might want to consider uh, how high that you would, uh, that, that you believe Stacks. would be appropriate for storage. So um, this 100 foot buffer, the, um, the other thing is, uh, in discussions with the applicant uh, today after I visited the site, the buffer area, there's a difference between buffering and screening, and I think sometimes that gets confused. There is adequate screening on a lot of the areas, but a buffer, you know, provides some comfort to a residential um, um, property that you don't have a tractor trailer uh, you know, 10 feet off your off your property line, uh, even though there would be a row of trees so that you couldn't see it, you're still going to hear it uh, in, 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 and have the fumes and so forth. So the 100 foot buffer is not necessarily screening, although your your um, your regulations say it be landscaped uh, appropriately. And I do think that um, the the buffer areas here uh, would would not require you know heavy duty landscaping because I do believe there's adequate screening. So, um, and um, I just uh, the only other comment just uh, it, uh, with respect to intrusions into the buffer. At the time the cell tower was approved, that was a that was a residential zone, as you know, and this commission changed it within the last few months. And by changing it, um, actually provided more opportunities for outdoor storage. Um, and when they do the uh, revised uh, submission, the uh, the parking table is calculated against usable floor area and 
that's not the requirement of the regulations. It's gross leasable area, so that's just a redoing it. And then finally, I would just say that Dana says it's an application for the diesel uh, motor vehicle. It's actually uh, three special permit applications. One is to allow the the um, the motor vehicle truck repair. The second is the um, outdoor storage, which is a special permit in your regulations. And the third is the multi-purpose use, even though the application and the everything refers to them as existing tenants, uh, this would be an opportunity to actually uh, issue a special permit for this site and make it a multi-purpose site, which up until this point it has not been. Thank you, Roger. May I continue? Sure. No, go ahead. So, um, as I as I look through, uh, you, you mentioned the, the staff uh, report before, but uh, we believe that the revised plans that we submitted addressed those items. Okay. The items that weren't addressed got incorporated into this resolution. That's okay. Okay. All right. So so by uh, so by going through this resolution, we're, we'll be covering everything. Well, that's except for the items that were mentioned. And I guess I'll just say the applicant is agreeable to. Uh, to removing any of those uh, vehicles that are disabled uh, from the site. Uh, and um, uh, as far as a, uh, a, height, a height restriction, I guess we're open to hearing what your thoughts are. I will say that the, the back portion there is, uh, um, is, is, is used by uh, um, Enfield Builders, who's, who's also uh, uh, associated with the, with the, the LLC that own, owns the property. Uh, and um, and, and, and they and they storm uh, earth materials sometimes, so those piles can get higher than than say um, uh, federal rent a fence, which puts those stacks those uh, those fence stuff to maybe ten feet high. Uh, does that sound sound about right? About ten feet high. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, so so um, I don't I, I don't I don't know where where that's. Uh, Headed, but we're open to, dis to discussing that that with you. Uh, let me go through the the, the the resolution. Was there anything else, Roger, that I missed uh, of the things you added there? Um, <clears throat> other than to say, I think that uh, we're we're at a place that uh, hopefully we can fashion a way to move this thing forward tonight because uh, uh, we've all worked very hard to get us to this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd appreciate that. So. Um, Specifically uh, uh, on the, the resolution, um, for, the, I'd like to uh, look at uh, site-specific conditions number eight, and there's A, B, C, D, and E listed. Um, and so the first one is uh, that the 100-foot buffer um, be shown on the plans. And as I pointed out with the yellow line, it is shown on the plan, so we feel we're in compliance with that. Uh, but we, we have no problem with it as a, as a condition since, since, since we since we have we have it on the plan, it's certainly our intent to, to, to show that that buffer line on, on the plan. Secondly, uh, B, uh, the buffer will be landscaped in accordance with zoning regulations, uh, based on what Rogers Rogers saying that uh, that the that the, but, that the existing screening is basically adequate. There may be some uh, a few um, additional plantings to uh, uh, as as he deems uh, appropriate, and we're willing to work with him on that uh, to uh, provide. Uh, pr provide that. Um, C, uh, with exception to the entrance roadway, there will be no other uses allowed in, 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 in the buffer area. P specifically, outside storage is not allowed in the buffer area. So um, we're, we're uh, agreeable to that. And, the w and so that's going to involve a change to the plan, as, as you saw which from this, this plan. This, uh, this orange strip which, here that Federal Rents Offense has is, is in that buffer. And so we'd have to move that. Uh, so that so uh, we understand that uh, uh, anything okay. that's uh, that's that's uh, that's uh, uh, a stored material that's in the buffer has to has to be moved out, out of the buffer, um, but not you're not looking for um, uh, the uh, uh, the pavement to be removed or anything that's 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 permanent on on the ground. Um, the the parking table number uh, D um, when when we met with staff. Uh, we were told that the 
uh, because because we looked and regulate. There's no gross leasable area definition in, in your regulations. So we asked, well, what what? How do you define that? And they said it's basically the same thing as as the as the uh, what do we call it? The, 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 the usable floor area. So we will update the the, the parking. Uh, uh, table to to have the correct label at, at the top, but I, but the numbers aren't going to change uh, unless I'm mistaken. And, and if it is, we'll yeah, the, the gross leasable area is what is the lease for? Uh, right. You know how much space is yeah. the is the optometrist leasing? Yeah. It's but, not, it, and you know, and that may not that that may be um, a higher number than what she would consider usable. Okay. So. Um, and then finally, E, uh, the applicant uh, needs to obtain an easement from the state of Connecticut for parking shown in the state right away or remove the spaces from the map. Uh, that's uh, this area uh, down here. We have a note saying 11 existing parking spaces. We didn't count them in our parking calculations, but we showed that, that they're there. We're going to uh, remove that note. We're going to move the striping uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the um, uh, pavement will, will stay there, but there'll be no there'll be no um, parking shown in, in that area. So there'll be no note, no striping in, in, in that area to clean, clean that up. So uh, we're agreeable to do that. And then uh, the only other item was uh, number 21 uh, is, re requires a, a class A2 as-built survey plan. So we've asked for a waiver of the A2 requirement for uh, the site plan. If you choose to grant, grant that waiver, which we hope that you do, then it makes sense to, 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 to not require it for the as-built either. If we were proposing to build a building or expand the parking or doing something that an as-built would show, then it, then it would make sense to have an, an A2. But if, we're, uh, if, if, if you agree with us that this is minor enough that, it's, that the A2 is not, not needed, then we shouldn't need an, an A, A2 for the as-built either. So, um, but that's... Um, uh, we, we, we certainly can still pr provide uh, uh, the, the certification that's required uh, to confirm that all of these things that are done um, have, been, have been done according to the plan. So, so that you, you'll still receive the, the assurance and the confirmation that, that all these things were done. So, um, Well, if, wouldn't that be according to a plan? Uh, well, I'm sorry. Well, Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Would that be according to a plan, though, that we don't have? That's the plan as it you're talking about revising to, it would be that according we to this plan. That so, the commission wouldn't receive, though, because there's a lot of revisions to this plan. The commission doesn't receive any any as built. It's just reviewed by by, by staff okay. administratively. Thank you. But, well, but, can I just clarify that? Sure. Um, after this plan is corrected tonight, should you adopt it, then the applicant comes back and submits uh, four copies of revised plan, which staff reviews and certifies to the board secretary that they they are in accordance with your approval. Right. The board secretary signs them on your behalf. Okay. And then the as-built, when the as-built comes in, um, that is reviewed by staff and then unless there's uh, some issue um, that's handled administratively. Okay. And also the secretary all, is very careful on what he signs. So yeah. he's <laughs> and also, all, all, all the conditions of approval are put right onto the, the cover sheet of the plan, so that it's all spelled out um, so that everyone understands what's required. So that's, that's my, my, those are my only, and, and they're, not, they're not objections, uh, they're just clarifications uh, our, our understanding of what those those uh, there was one other clarification for the Commission in, in your notes it says the approval you wanted approval of existing multi-tenant uses and would yes you I did mention that originally our application was just for the industrial diesel use and I talking with staff we've, we've modified we've amended our application to be for those other uses and I don't know if you're going to want to do separate um, votes on those, well, three, those three items? Or that's, that's why I wanted to get there, to because it, it looks like we may, and I don't know if we have a list of what those uses are that we're okay. They're, they're on the map. Okay. They're on the map on the parking all right. table. All of the names of the businesses are, are, are listed there. Oh, that's on the drive. Okay. There, there yep. was also a letter provided that, that out, outlined, that gave a description of what each of those do. If you'd like, I can go through that. Okay. Well, basically, they're they're either um, office or um, professional services or um, 
Well, I know the dentist automobile. we had, which was a yeah. professional, yeah. right? Yeah, it's still okay. it's mostly I, office. I, I know things have changed almost uh, yearly or, you know, in and out. And uh, I didn't know if we were given a blanket. Well, it will, actually, we are giving a blanket okay to what's there. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? I do have a question because I just like it to be consistent with all the other applications that we have. Hours of operations of this business, um, I don't see anything where, are they changing? I'm just, want to make sure that we don't give this blanket okay and then they're 24-7 because you do have residential area in, in that section. So in, in regard to the industrial, the new use, industrial diesel uh, in driveline, in the, uh, the cover letter that, it, that I submitted with uh, the application uh, on page uh, two, uh, uh, second paragraph, which uh, begins industrial diesel and dri driveline is a heavy equipment repair garage. It lists the, uh, the hours of operation Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday, 7 a.m. To, to, to noon. Uh, so uh, that's the, the, the hours of operation that's, that's in the record uh, for the proposed use. As far as the existing uses, there's no changes being proposed. I don't know if that's adequate to... Okay, no, I just wanted to make so. sure there wasn't any kind of changes that later we'll be hearing about. Well, I would suspect in emergencies we'd expect a construction company would be in there. Uh, possibly the heavy equipment might have to be there. If you had a, some type of an emergency where they, the equipment was needed or used. Um, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I will uh, say that um, um, uh, Christy Selby from Industrial Diesel and Driveline is here if you'd like to ask some specific questions about her, her business. Uh, and uh, uh, John Petronella is, is here re representing the property owner, uh, JFP Realty. So, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, tra the police traffic officer did raise the question of when the gate is open um, in, 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 their, in his comments, and perhaps the applicant could address that because he was concerned about the gate being closed and traffic backing up into the street. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one before he comes up. Uh, I had one, and I was concerned. And I, I there was, uh, for example, we we had from the police. We had the questions. We have no report from the fire department for some reason, uh, and the the engineering department had no concerns, and health said they had no concerns at this time. The one we don't have is water pollution control. And why, why I'm asking is uh, on page four, you show the garage floor plan, and there's a lot of floor drains. And the last time, I, I thought they didn't want floor drains in garages. And I, I don't know if this went to the uh, yep. water pollution control or, or not. I, and I, I mean, I also see them in the uh, locker room, which I would expect. And there, there is an oil water separator. It doesn't say what it's connected to. Uh, I would imagine it's town sanitary sewers. Yes, yeah. yes, there, there is an oil water separator. Uh, and so the floor drains, when you have floor drains, you're required to have an oil water separator. This was required when the building was built. Uh, and, and so it's, it's, it was used for repair garages and it, it's, it's, it, almost, every, almost every repair garage has a floor drain and, a, and an oil water separator. So this is consistent. Well, with, I, I uh, know a uses. couple of times that they have, they've, we've had some that have required the floor drains to be plugged or, or stopped. They didn't want floor drains. Generally, if, if, if it's not hooked up to sewer, then yes. Uh, the, the other thing is on this there's no maintenance schedule or inspection schedule for the oil water separator. Okay. While he's looking that up, I'll just tell you there was an ART on this application, and in addition, after the plans were revised, they were circulated again to all departments. So all departments have had two 
two opportunities to comment. Okay. Yeah, I believe I believe you're correct, Mr. Chairman. There's there's nothing listed there specifically. Um, it's it's an existing oil water separator that's uh, uh, um, been uh, in existence, but we're happy to to include a, a maintenance schedule on on the plan. Just document that that's it should be because uh, and make sure it's uh, the so that, so that it's followed. That should be added then to the conditions. Okay, thank you, Dana. Any any further questions for him? I have a couple, Dana. In, in terms of, you mentioned the fact that you're going to store earthen materials on the site. Mm -hmm. And, you know, normally what happens is when, when you get a significant rain, it, it, it has a tendency of washing, you know, materials off of piles and into driveways and into areas that, that aren't necessarily conducive to having, you know, contaminant runoffs or any kind of, you know, foreign material runoffs. You're worried about, you're worried about erosion? Well, not only erosion, but, you know, just, you know, just silt and, you know, discoloration of, of you know, the, the wetlands. Because I, I think that there's some phragmites just on the, the, the state of Connecticut, you know, I-91 site where, you know, there's a collection area that, that is wetlands. We could, and we could add some, uh, as we're talking about maintenance uh, schedules, we could add some additional... Uh, wording to the plan that uh, that those uh, th those piles will be uh, uh, contained if need be, uh, put down uh, hay bales or or cover it uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 control to keep it from uh, 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 migrating. Yeah, I, I think that, that would be a prudent thing to sure. do. Because the only other th question I have is is that you mentioned the fact that you know I, I guess you know looking at the difference between buffering and screening and I did take a look at your photographs and you know and the only thing that I did notice is that you know a lot of the, the vegetation there that's used for screening is really sort of you know weeds and vines and invasive type of materials that that necessarily aren't ne conducive to landscaping they're they're sort of they're there only because you know they they happen to be you know non-restrictive in, in terms of, you know, their pro proliferation. Yes. Yeah, they, and, and they just keep going and going and going. But, you know, eventually what might happen is, is that, you know, I, I have a problem of using, you know, these, you know, non-controllable materials for screening. And, and I think that landscaping would be, you know, a better, you know, way of screening materials be only because you can control, you know, exactly what you're going to get rather than to get some kind of random, you know, material to, to, to screen. And, you know, to, to supplement that is, is that you also mentioned the fact that you're not going to be removing the pavement in the, in the, the areas, you know, of the, of the buffer. And, you know, I, the only thing that, that, that I ha hesitate about is that, you know, if something is there and, and it can be used, normally it is used. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, if, if you know, we're, we're trying to use it as a buffer, it, it should be really a buffer and, and it really should have you know, a, you know, a, a non-acceptable, you know, platform on which it, it could possibly be used for a different use other than buffering. And, you know, so I have a, a problem of, of leaving, you know, pavement in, in a buffered area only because, you know, we're not going to be policing it. Nobody's going to be looking at it, you know, 100, you know, 24 seven, but, you know, we, we, we expect that, you know, you would be not using it, but there's never any guarantee that, you know, the, a responsible person, you know, is, is always watching what everybody else is doing so that, you know, something could be put somewhere, even though it's not supposed to be put somewhere only because nobody mentioned the fact that it can't go there. So I, I think that, you know, I would like to, sort of have that addressed okay well um we we have offered to remove some of the pavement um there, there's, there's a cost asso associated with this these were these are I existing conditions uh um and uh, i think that the, the applicant's hesitant to uh it, could, could you put up some kind of a barrier in terms of you know you can leave the the pavement there but have a barrier that would prevent somebody from utilizing that space that's in a buffer in terms of it, it doesn't necessarily have to be you know something you know that's exotic but you know basically it, it could be you know maybe yellow striping that says you know don't you know or you know some kind of a you know 
plastic fence or something or some kind of you know barrels that are you know spaced at a certain distance that would prevent somebody from using that that area and and it would delineate you know a buffered area from a, a, a storage area fencing the workout was uh, just, yeah We've got a federal rent offense uh, right uh, right on site there. Um, I think we could work out some kind of a, of a barrier, yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 <coughs> if I could comment, I think if, if you put up plastic fencing or something, that'll disappear over time, too. I mean, I does, think you, you've, got to, you've got to dig a trench down the middle wide enough to hold trees and put, some, put something in that that'll, that, that'll say on the other side of these, the, the whatever you want the there side, is whatever. buffer. Right, and it, it, it's just that de delineation where that, you know, because the, the final question that I have, and, and, and I think that, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, the amount of storage that is available for the site. And, you know, I, I be, and, and again, I, I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, are, are we using buffered areas as part of the rear lot to calculate storage area, or are we ignoring the buffered areas? In uh, terms of you know your, your, lot your size regulations calculations, do not exclude uh, buffers from from that that calculation. Okay, so yeah, they, they they are included. There right. is there is one one thing here, which is that um, though your regulations say that the storage has to be in the rear yard, it doesn't allow it to be in the side yard. Right. And so if you look at this. Yeah, we, what we, street in, you're on. we interpreted that it's behind the building, so it's it's rear. Your your the rear yard is is all the space that's behind the the back part of that building. Everything, the rest of that is all all rear yard. So. Any further questions? I guess I had a question about going on the sort of the screening versus buffer discussion. It appears from the plans that a lot of the screening vegetation is not located on the applicant's property, but rather is located on the abutting property. And so I wonder, you know, if, if this requires a type, T, type D buffer in which there's, you know, screening-like plantings involved, suppose the property owner next door decides one day, I want to cut down the trees on my own property and use my own property for my own self. Um, if we don't require the type D buffer plans now in that space, can we, are we sure it's harmonious to be next door to a, a residential? Oh, you have the property owner next next door came to the meeting, said he's happy with the way that it is. I don't think he has any intentions of taking taking that down. Uh, I think he likes it the way that it is. The next owner might Well, the next up. owner, do we know what the next owner might want to do if there is a next owner? No. I mean, it's, I it's guess, just a comment. I guess I, guess I, guess, I don't I know. guess that would be their choice. Uh, I mean, if, 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 they, if they wanted to do that, they would yeah. be doing it, knowing what their what that it would be. Yeah, because again, you know, I, you know, again, just to supplement that in terms of you know, I, I think that you know, the land is you know, and, and I imagine that this this establishment is going to be there for another 50 years, let's say, and and you know, you would have to believe that you know, the current owner of the, the, the property. Is, is not going to be the current owner for another 50 years. You know, there, there will be some turnover and, and that, you know, what we need to do is, is look at long term, you know, what the requirements are only because it, it could become a problem at a future date in, in accordance with if, if he wanted to do all of a sudden he wanted to do farming there and all of a sudden he did need to remove or he could remove those trees, you know, or, or put a, you know, some kind of a you know, vegetation plot there that, you know, then all of a sudden you know, that buffer or that screening, you know, will be sort of not there. Well, sure. We don't have any control of what someone does on, on, on another property. But they, they well, the, the point. The point is, is that all the vegetation will be here. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's all, pro that's all vegetation that's not on the applicant's property. So, so you may want to consider, uh, if this row of trees here, you might want to extend it down here. And, and I think that would be closer to the D buffer yard that's required here, which requires trees that would provide both a buffer and screening. Yeah, I, it, this, I, I understand what, you, what, what you're saying. Just keep, keep, keep in mind this applicant, I mean, the, the, the property owner bought this property 20 years ago. This is how it looked then. He hasn't changed anything. He's just been using it. 
and now that a, a new use wants to come in, suddenly he's got to re remove all this. We're, we're trying to work with you, be, be something reasonable. Maybe we can do a little more. Uh, John, you want to? Yeah. Okay. Yep, I know. Hi, uh, I'm John Petronella for the owner, uh, JFP Realty. And uh, just just as a point, um, the going down the driveway here, there, there's, there's a row of tall white pines that are here now. Those, I believe, are on our property, right. although it's not depicted here. But, but it, it's, and it's a very tall, they're fully grown, and they're, I don't know, they're 30 or 40 feet tall, and they go all the way down. And what we show here, um, what Dana has shown here, is, is another, to continue that row of white pines a little bit further here in that buffer area. Mr. Petronella, Dana's yes. map shows them as on the other side. I know he does, and I think he's, he's, he's yeah, wrong in that. A2 survey, we yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, also, with the property owner, and, and I had to repair some fencing back in here um, that, that, was, that, that was down. And the property owner specifically came out and, and asked what we were doing. And I said, well, I have to repair this fencing because it's laying down. He, and he, was, he made sure that we would not cut down any of this vegetation because it was so thick and grown in here. And, and, and I promised him. Uh, that we would not cut it down. We would just cut down what we needed, about four feet wide, to repair the fence and put it back up. And and we did that, um, actually all the way across here to the uh, um, uh, to the west side, and then uh, along this north side, we, we repaired some fencing. Um, and again, the app, uh, he was here, the property owner, last yeah. meeting and, and spoke for that. And and we've have a, a very good relationship with him as well. Um, so I mean, we could certainly spot those trees and make sure that where they are and, and show them but there is uh, you know a a, a row of, wall, of white pines from the property line on the street that extend all the way down uh, to where the gate area is uh, and, and comes out like this it's depicted there but i think that this sh is shown wrong dana was he to explain the fence the question by the police department on the fence being open or closed, or the gate. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I want to address that, John. As long as he's up there with the yeah. What, what what which uh, fence and gate area? It was a uh, gate down on uh, Depot Hill Road, I believe. Was it the one furthest uh, to, to 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 the west? There's, there's two gated uh, driveways. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. When those are locked. Well. Generally, this um, this gate is closed uh, at night and on weekends, as as this one here. Uh, this gate here is is open and closed um, as needed uh, for the back for the back uh, area. What what we try to do is restrict all the truck traffic and and even any commercial traffic from anything from back in here to use this gate, which would be the furthest west, and, and to keep them off of Route Five. Uh, so to have them go to Depot Hill Road. So that gate, you know, it can be open periodically, uh, uh, you know, di different hours of the day. Um, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, maybe it's left open, I'm not sure. But during the day it's usually open, and then at night it's supposed to be closed and open on as needed. Uh. I don't know if that would cover what he what he wanted to know. I guess. I, I I guess you know just just reading it you know and now I'll read it verbatim. And would the existing gate on on Depot Hill Road entrance for trucks be left in an open position during business hours? If this gate were left closed, it would take time to open for each truck, and that would likely result in a truck waiting on Depot Hill Road, right. or at least partially in a roadway. So basically, you know, if, if, if it's not open, you, you'd be blocking traffic at, for every single truck that was coming in. So, and I think that was a, a traffic concern for the police department. So, and it's e either going to be open or it's going to be closed, or, you know, he's not going to be happy. So, he wants you know, it open. He wants it open, yeah, right. and, and that, that's what he's saying, you know. Uh, I don't have a problem with leaving it open because I, I think most of the time it is open for that reason. Um, and, and, and they know trucks are coming in, kind of. Yeah. 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 You know, again, we, we restrict uh, the traffic for, for any trucks or heavy traffic to that gate specifically. Okay. 
So that's uh, I purposely I keep them off of the main entrance on Route 5 uh, because some years ago uh, I had discussions with the neighbors across the street and, uh, and my own trucks were going out of there at 6, 6.30 in the morning and, uh, it, you know, they make, they make noise and there was uh, uh, some ch uh, children uh, um, in, in the houses there, so uh, making noises and, and so forth. So I purposely restricted the traffic to, uh, to Depot Hill Road just to keep the neighbors satisfied. I'm always trying to work with them if, uh, if that's possible. So, uh, you know, we can do that. Uh, I, I don't have any, have any issue with keeping that gate open um, at all times if that's what the commission prefers. In, in the traffic safety guy does. Yeah, or, or at least during the hours of operation when it's when, when the right. site's being used. Yeah. You know, if it's not being used then it's fine. It's gotta be I open all the time when it's when it when it's when there's activity. From what's written site. that's all I, I know it's open during the day all the time. Oh, at, that's at night time uh, I, I thought when, when he was done he, that he that he closed the gate. Because just to piggyback on that, in terms of the, the, the police department had another comment in terms of, and I'll read it verbatim again, the submitted plans show turning movements for tractor trailers. These plans show a very tight right-hand turn onto Depot Hill Road entrance for tractor trailers. It would appear to me that this entrance would need to be widened for the purpose to avoid damage to curbing and landscaping there. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, he has another concern about that gate. Okay, I, I think what's what's happening here, here, here's the plan that he's referring to, and these are the, you can see the truck turning movements on, on here. This is a truck that's uh, that's entering the site, uh, um, and and it, it swings in, and it doesn't cross over the, the property lines. This one here is not is not a truck entering the site, it's the truck leaving the site, and it, it needs to swing out to the opposite lane so that it's, uh, so that, you know what I'm saying? So there's a center line here in the road, so, I think maybe what he's what he's thinking is that this is a truck out here that's 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 way out and come trying to come in, but that's not the case. The truck is pointing in, in, in this direction, so there's no there's no issue with, with with truck access to that to that driveway, and I think the plan demonstrates that. Okay, well if he's done his figuring. Yeah, if, if, if I may also, this, this is not a, uh, a trucking terminal, if you will. There's not a whole lot of traffic going in and out of that gate in, in terms of uh, on a daily basis. Uh, there's probably uh, uh, less than a dozen trips in and out of there. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not a terminal where they're, they're, it's, it's freight being transferred in and out and, and on the site. Um, so it, it is very limited. Okay, anything further before you open the public? Yes. I just had one question. Um, we've made so many changes to the regulations, I'm probably not seeing it. But it says here that the outside storage, this is in, in industrial, um, the outside storage, where is it, uh, permitted in um, an industrial zone, it's limited to 20%. I don't care about that, but it says, um, any outdoor storage must be directly connected to activities conducted inside the buildings. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, it says outdoor storage must be in a defined areas and not scattered about or throughout the site. So how do we apply that? Yeah, that that was a, a concern um, and it it's, it's really in multiple defined areas. So that's an interpretation the commission's gonna have to make. I know that Commissioner Ladd was the one who put that requirement in at the time you wrote the regulations. He's not here tonight, but um, the notion was you didn't want the entire uh, back, back portion uh, scattered about. So um, I really, I mean, it's a good point, and you ought to consider it. And if the applicant has any suggestions as to how he could consolidate it and not have it mm -hmm. in multiple locations, uh, that would be helpful. I have a thought. It's a corner lot for all intents and purposes. They could always go to Zoning Board of Appeals and get a variance so that they, you know, because you couldn't have it where the book says you need to have it. So that's your hardship. <clears throat> 
I think the applicant would like to finish tonight. <laughs> well, I'd like him to finish tonight, too, but you got to adhere to your zoning regs. I'm saying, uh, so, you know, you might want to have some conversation with the applicant and come to some conclusion that you're comfortable with. If you're not, you're not, Commissioner. But I'm just saying that um, uh, because basically what you have in front of you is an interpretation of your regulations. And you go over to the ZBA and they're going to say, well, what did that regulation mean? And you, it's your regulation, and you have to interpret it whether what you see on the map meets that regulation. Because it's not something like you're, you can only have 12 trucks uh, in the backyard and you want to put 20. Uh, this is a question of is the outdoor storage as shown on the map consistent with not scattered about but concentrated? Well, to me, it does appear that it is consolidated by you've got so many different companies or people there, and each one has his outside storage or area for that. And, and in that way, it is consolidated. But do we know which of the tenants is, I mean, I don't know that it matters right now, but do we know which of the tenants is using which storage? Yes, yeah, so he, he, he just pointed okay. out earlier, Dana had with the fence company's section. You can go and do that now. So yeah, we, we, we did we, we did try to uh, consolidate as much as possible. One of the things that uh, that your regulations also say is there has to be access to it. So if we just consolidated this all into one giant glob here, well, yeah. you're not going to be able to get at it. So so you need to have have it spread out a little bit in order to to get around and, and, and access it. So I, we, we believe that we, with this aisle that we have coming around to access it, things are, things, things are neat uh, and, and, and organized. Uh, so, um, but to, to in, in answer your question, uh, these, these areas here are for the federal rent offense. This, th this one here that's in the buffer, we're gonna, we're gonna move probably up to this area uh, to, to the back uh, here uh, so that so it's out of the buffer and um, uh, the uh, uh, these areas are, are used by Enfield builders uh, and um, I think the, these these loading docks are part of uh, Winding Brook so those are the three the three uses that um, uh, that, that use uh, the, the outside storage uh, Winding Brook Enfield Builders and Federal Rent Offense. Those are the three right so now, right now yeah. that are that, that are using out, outside and, storage. But and what's the one up at the north part? This one here. Yeah. Um, there's, there's. I don't think this this area is really being being used right right now, but it's an area that uh, that we designated that could that, that could be used uh, pro probably by by Enfield Builders. Would uh, same 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 with this area here. Would you move the? Uh, there's a dock outside storage area, and mm -hmm. in uh, the assistant planner's um, memo, she stated that you couldn't have outside storage on a dock area. So. Oh yeah, she was referring. To, I'm sorry, she was referring to this dock up here yeah. uh, near the near the front. Yep. If uh, it, and if if, if you, any of you saw saw the photos, there there are two storage containers sitting on top of this dock, uh, and they were there when the. 20 years ago when he bought the place uh, and, and and they are used for for storage and he's agreed to move those okay. uh, so those yeah. and that okay. and there's a note on the plan that says that those will be removed oh okay because uh, yeah, doesn't it's right here yeah, is little that little number little. four you somebody marked up all the, that's what he's, oh that's the area right okay there. but it's I'm talking side. about uh, I'm talking about the um, yeah the, these lower ones here yes yes, yes. Those I don't believe were were what uh, staff was referring to, so that, that they didn't explain that these these were a problem. Well, because I think they're behind she the said building. They're that outside yard. storage was not allowed on dock areas. Correct. That's not right. So, well, it's but you have plenty. I'm it's sorry, not a but problem you have to have it on a dock room. area. It's a problem to have it on a dock area where the dock is in the wrong place. When it, yep. when the dock's in the wrong location, then you can't have it on a dock area. There's nothing, you know, inherently bad about a dock. It's just this particular dock happens to be in front of the building. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think they, the regulations don't allow it for it to be on top of a loading dock, and that was the point. And wherever it was on a loading dock, it had to be taken off of the loading so dock. So, so, so these... It'd have to be relocated, right? These areas here? 
But that's okay because you have the extra storage area that's quite close to them that you said you were kind of holding off on using at a future date. Well, the the the, um, the, the, the trucks uh, come come in here. They unload the material, load it back onto the onto the next one. Um, if they do, but they they don't really transfer freight. Um, yeah. You know that that that's, that's what the dock would be for, though. Yeah, that's that's what CLMP used it for. Right, so it's a CLMP thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that, John? Uh, removing these uh, it's, uh, out, outside storage areas. Well, I'm not sure. Really, uh, uh, is there is there some materials on there now? Is is that is that what we're talking about? What's on there now has to be moved down to a lower. Uh, right. So the loading dock's a loading dock and not a repository for outdoor storage yeah. containers right we, we we can move that to the storage areas defined on the uh, on the plan thank you okay anyone else before I open to the public okay thank you Dana thank you John you're welcome thank you welcome. anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Last call. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Does it, the applicant for the auto motor vehicle thing want to speak in favor of her application? Apparently not. She has an answer. <laughs> uh, Roger. She's just the applicant for the motor vehicle uh, All right. thing. Well, if you have, you focused on what John was doing, but she's the uh, garage. That so, if you had any questions for her. Hi, I'm. Christy Selby, I'm the owner of Industrial Diesel and Driveline. Uh, it's been a long road, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to move forward from here. Um, oh. Any questions? Oh, I think it was on. I think you just have to move yes. the. Uh, speaks closer to How's that? Is that better? Okay. <laughs> any questions for? Heavy equipment, um, trucks, construction equipment. Um, sorry, I'm sure it'll be well received in Enfield because there aren't too many places that do that. That was one of the, the big reasons for choosing Enfield. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against? Thank you. That's. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against? Last call to speak in favor against Roger comments. So, uh, in, the draft in the draft resolution you had, there was A, B, C, D, and E. Um, the ones I wrote down, uh, F would be no storage of inoperable or unregistered vehicles or trucks. Um, G is tractor trailers will not be used for storage. Um, and we the the issue of the height um i just i'll put something out there uh storage will not be higher than 15 feet you can um so that's uh and then the next one is oil and water uh separator maintenance schedule to be added to the plan you the uh outdoor storage of uh materials will be uh, stabilized appropriately um, so as not to cause uh, siltation or runoff. The, um, the Deep Bell Hill Road gate will be open during the hours of operation. And the last one, which was discussed, and uh, was uh, pa pavement in the buff area to be removed. Um, so you have to, that may require more discussion. Or, or delineated in terms of it, it has right. to be. Or, or delineated so you, you don't, the storage doesn't just wander across. Right. Correct. Was, okay, was there no. also a discussion about more planting on that side area, or was that something in the Right, plans? and and so then you that the would commission be B, discussed, B. but it wasn't clear what you wanted to yes. do, so you might want to also consider the plantings that are actually on the property. That was what that was a major uh, problem. There's some there. Right. Because yeah. the ones that are there, according to the Class D survey submitted, are shown as on the adjacent property. 
Yeah, and in, in terms of, I think that item B says that you know shall be in accordance with zoning regulations, and and you know if if we sort of just expand item B to landscaped and delineated in accordance with zoning re regulations, that that would be adequate. Okay, now uh, the applicant, have you received? Have you seen the uh, the requirements or the, the conditions? Yes. Any problems with them or the additions? Uh, only what we've what we've already uh, um, uh, discussed. Uh, one, I will add the discussion about um, what to do with the pavement in in the buffers. Uh, uh, we would uh, propose uh, to provide a, a a concrete barrier, like a jersey barrier, or, or a con concrete blocks. You can't can't get past those. That would provide a right something that a substantial would be barrier. So. Okay, that's just understood. That okay. doesn't have to be written down. Right. Okay. Whatever you got there. Okay. So you have no problems, and anyone, any reasons do you want me to keep it open? Okay. I just yeah. would like to say, with respect to that, is the um, buffer area on a prior applicant. Um, you did require paving to be taken up and plantings to be put in and that was a recent meeting and so just in terms of consistency I just point that out to the Commission mm -hmm. and, and again that's one of the reasons why I did bring it up in terms of you know we did have them well, remove everything and you were, know. They, were they proposing a, a, a new building or? No. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it was the same situation. Paved park, pave parking lot had to be a buffer, uh, and the pavement is being taken up and grass being put down. But, but, but what, I, what I was asking was the application that involve a, a a building addition, a building construction? No, no, no. 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 It was a, a, a change of use. Exact Just same thing. Change of, change of use. Just change of use. Same basic. Right. So, you know, in that sense, you know, I think that to be consistent, we, we really need, we can't show favoritism one way or another, that we need to be consistent. So, I, yeah, in that case, I, I'd say you should really pull it out. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, this application, uh, if, if, if I may, this application is for a, uh, um, a use um, it's really for a license, for, for Department of Motor Vehicle license, for a repair license. Uh, the, the applicant, Industrial Diesel, um, they're looking at a 5,000 square foot building on this site, which, which is about, uh, represents uh, probably less than 10% of what the uh, overall site is. Um, and and, and to, to, to bring this whole site into compliance, uh, into zoning compliance it would constitute uh, uh, a land taking and that, that that's something that when we started off we we were not going to uh, uh, we did not propose any improvements uh, and we're still not we still weren't imp uh, uh, proposing any improvements and, and where this is going in the last year of, of, of discussing this is it keeps getting chipped away chipped away chipped away where uh, you know again for for what's there uh, for for what we're, for what the application is really looking for a light again a license a DMV license um, it, it doesn't make any sense uh, for us the owner the landowner to uh, to bring the site in, into compliance and and into and, uh, and to do all of these improvements for uh, uh, what we consider a small portion of the property and a small lease to the property so I think what the other applicant was was looking at or the other application referred to. Um, was a large industrial warehouse um, that, that was changing the entire property and, 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 and the zone uh, application was for uh, the, uh, whole, the whole building on the site. So to, to, to compare that to this, I think, is, is two different things. I guess, you know, what we have to view is, is that this is actually three separate applications in terms of it, it, it is a multi-use, multi mixed use you know application mm -hmm. so there is one area that we're trying to get into compliance mm -hmm. and then the outdoor storage is another area trying to get into compliance mm -hmm. so that that mm -hmm. it, it is you know more complicated than just 
you know, the approval of, of a motor vehicle repair garage. So, you know, it, it's really the other two aspects that are sort of driving, you know, the the requirement. And, and you know, I, I, again, just to be fair to, to, you know, everybody involved, you know, if, if there was some way to ensure that, you know, we aren't, you know, because I, I guess the only other, th we could never be sure that they couldn't be parking trucks <coughs> adjacent in that parking area mm -hmm. because it was next to a residential area. Mm -hmm. And and that was the only way that we could ensure that because we weren't going to be policing it ourselves. So that, you know, we, if, if we possibly re receive some assurance that, you know, in fact, you know, this will never happen, that, you know, you will never encroach on that area. And, and I don't know how anybody can ever guarantee that it will never happen, only because, you know, it, it, you know, people of responsible charge aren't always noticing what's going on in the daily functions of, of a larger mixed-use, multi-use, you know, system where, you know, something happens and, and somebody just says, oh, just put it there, don't worry about it. And then everybody forgets that it's not supposed to be there. And, and, and how do we, you know, sort of, you know, ensure that that doesn't happen, well, especially in if, that kind of a zone. If he puts up the Jersey barriers and, and they're there, the, the amosite is going to deteriorate anyway. Uh, and if someone comes along and removes another owner or something, mm -hmm. removes the Jersey barriers, uh, well, and the construction company has been there, the Petronellos <clears throat> have been there, what, you said 20 years, and I imagine right. they'll be there a few, a few more years. Yeah, we hope. Uh, I, I don't see the Amosite lasting that long, and with the Jersey barriers there, uh, somebody will see them if they're moved, and nobody's going to go back in there and repair that. Somebody, if they come back in, you have another chance to get them to take it out. Because there may, may be, if there is another owner, or should ever be another owner, you'll have somebody will have a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's if that's if there's something that they do that requires them to come before the commission. Right, or, or and they might not. Oh, well, that's true, but sometimes you <laughs> you can't get the whole. Mr. Chairman, are you under discussion now? Is the public hearing closed? Uh, uh, well, I've been trying to close it, and I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I'm just saying is that, well, you know, I mean, at some point talking, the applicant's got to vacate, and then you have your discussion. Uh, I know. I know that. But, but uh, I mean, the, the applicant talk. can't participate under the rules in your discussion. No, but it, uh, they're asking questions of the applicants. I mean, the applicant wishes to answer, and I can't stop it. Mm. All I'm saying is you want a piece of the whole pie or you want to take a piece of it at a time and correct something a little bit at a time. I mean, we've we've taken little pieces before. And the towers and some of the other, I, I remember the time with the pellet company and so forth that we had. So that's up to you. And that can be a discussion later if I can get the meeting closed. But under a special permit, Mr. Chairman, the applicant does not have to agree to your conditions of approval. The uh, the applicant will only have to agree to your conditions of approval on a site plan. This is uh, sp three special permits, health, welfare, and public safety. And uh, so you have complete discretion uh, in accordance with health, welfare, and public safety. But I'll never get there unless I can close the meeting. <laughs> You finished the application. Any questions again for the applicant? Any statements now? For what's in the uh, conditions now, do you have any problems? Um, with, with respect to the, uh, um, the tractor trailers uh, not for storage, uh, what what we're proposing and, and what your regulations call for is storage. The, the a, a tractor trailers that are there um, could have materials in there for storage, and, and I, I'm not sure that I understand. We're, we're we want to store tractor trailers there, um, and and now you're saying that we 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 can't have storage in there. I'm not sure that I understand what. Well, for example, if you have uh, 
I can't use an example. Let's say uh, some company wishes to store a material there, and they bring your your uh, vehicle in with uh, loaded with their Christmas, let's say, stock for next year. And they put it in a trailer, and, they, and you put it on your property. Right. The tractor trailers that are in the application are tractor trailers where the, the company comes in and the drivers come in, they park their cars, they get the tractor trailers and they go out. Right. Um, the tractor trailers that are, the, that, that are subject to not being there is there are some trailers that are sitting there that they have built steps up to and they're really just a uh, uh, you know an accessory building that's not on the tax well, that's rolls. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah, so like I mean that there's a big difference between tractor trailers that are dro driven in and driven out uh, as opposed to those that sit there and the weeds grow up around the wheels. I well I'm I'm not aware that that there's something there I I am aware that there's a, tra a trailer there that has a set of steps up to it, and, and that is, is a unit that's typically uh, not, not stationary, where there shouldn't be weeds growing there, but uh, if that's your definition of it, yeah, uh, I, I don't want anything st that's uh, stationary with weeds growing up there. I'm trying to keep it uh, neat, but, but that's the understanding that I was asking um, sure. to, to what that definition what that definition is uh, as far as the height for 15 feet for outside storage I don't have an issue with that um, un unless it's a stockpile area uh, we've had stockpile of topsoil there that maybe exceeds that uh, but 15 feet I think would be uh, we we'd be uh, agreeable to um, as far as stabilizing for uh, earthen materials, absolutely not not a problem with, with that. We, we would put in silt fence or hay bales or whatever would be required. We don't want erosion problems, so uh, we, we don't have an issue with that. Uh, the condition of the gate being open during hours of operation, again, no issue there. We take no exception to that. Um, and. Um, absolutely uh, no issue with us uh, to remove any disabled vehicles we don't want a junkyard there um, I I know that we had a pickup truck that was there not too long ago that was removed it was a tenant that we um, uh, uh, removed he, he left the he, he left the pickup truck there it was it was abandoned it was not registered um, and things were growing uh, around it but we eventually got that removed I'm not sure that there's anything more there if there is I certainly have no issue with complying with uh, um, not having uh, abandoned vehicles there uh, again we, we, we would have those removed so no, no issue there um, as far as uh, any uh, uh, maintenance uh, with respect to the uh, oil water separator we, certainly comply with the note on there that would have to be you know regularly maintained and so forth uh, that's that would be industrial diesels yeah and, and that would you usually that's a standard procedure anyway I, yeah. I think that would be on there so yeah. we don't have have any issue with putting a note on that okay. so I think I think we're good yeah, I think they, the only question was was whether that pavement's going to be removed or if there's those jersey barriers would will, will be adequate we just ask for you to uh, please can consider the circumstances of this application and uh, um, work with us thank you thank you any questions for the applicant okay so much has gone on anybody in the audience would like to speak in favor or against Again, anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor or against? Last call to speak in favor or against? Again, Roger. Uh, close 2878. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a um, uh, a resolution a motion a motion I'm sorry I'm like to make a motion to accept I guess no, 
uh, to, uh, to, hold to, on. To let's get, let's okay. wait a minute. Hold, hold on. You, uh, Roger, just let me check. First, we need to uh, have a vote on uh, oh. a waiver of the survey, A2 survey. That's correct. So that I, would be the first motion. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we waive the A2 survey for public hearing 2878, 1654 King Street. Second. Motion's made second. Any discussion? Well, I, I had, a, I guess, a comment, which is there's been a lot of reference to what's currently there but not reflected on the map. And at some point, it's getting hard to keep track. Um, at least, you know, obviously I've been focused on the buffer next to that driveway in. Um, and I was informed tonight that there are pines there. Um, but again, it's not reflected on the map. And that's of concern to me, particularly because the screening that's currently there is not on the applicant's property. Um, so I think there are some benefits, I think many benefits to having an A2. And that's my concern. Y y y and and I, I would agree with you in terms of, you know, I think that, you know, the, it. You know, obviously, you know, this, the surveyor who's utilizing somebody else's map should do due diligence, due diligence and, and actually go out there and look at, is he accurately reflecting what is there? But I, I think that, you know, the, the cost of an A2 survey on an existing, you know, facility that is having some modifications but not significant, you know, remedial work or significant work being done, you know, is sort of, you know, possibly, you know, out of the realm of, you know, doing, you know, such an extensive research project for something that, that is existing. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, they need to go back and do their due diligence, you know, and, and they will be have to do an as-built that reflects, you know, some of the, the improvements that they have made. And at that point, hopefully they will upgrade their drawing so that it, it does, you know, more or less accurately reflect what's there rather than a cartoon drawing that we might see right now. I'm, I'm sure that uh, Roger will make sure that it's done, or you will, as you before you sign. So, is the intent of the motion to also, as Dana pointed out, and uh, the conditions of approval require the as-built BA2? So, in waiving the A2 on the application, are you also waiving the A2 on the as-built, or would you want an A2 on the as-built? Well, I, th I think that, you know, as, again, you know, I think that, you know, they, they need to do their due diligence in terms of, you know, I, and, and again, I'm not sure that how we can in, ensure that or, you know, enforce that, that, you know, it has to accurately reflect, you know, what is being, what is there and what is being done or what has been done. So, you know, I and, and again, you know, I would have to believe that, you know, J.R. Russo are professional engineers and professional surveyors, and, and they should have, you know, the manpower to at least get fairly close to, to what they, they should be doing. And, you know, they, 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 they can't necessarily take verbatim without verifying some of the things in the field. They, they, they need to, to actually check things in the field rather than just accept things that somebody might have shown before. And, and as a professional, I think that, you know, that is part of the, their ethics that they, they need to, to do, you know, a better job at per showing what is actually there rather than just, you know, accepting something that, you know, and just throwing things on a drawing. But, you know, that's what, what I believe. And, and I, hopefully this is an eye-opener for them that they, you know, will take this to heart that they need to do things like that. No, somebody call for a vote. I just, the discussion's still going on. All right. I don't have any Somebody else. move the question? Wait. Do yes. something. I'd like to call for a vote on, on the issue. We move the question. Okay. Yeah, move the question. Move the question. All right. All in favor and the, the waiver, as I understand it, uh, is for the submission. Okay. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait a minute. Who's... Six, Two, four, five, six. six. I'm sorry. Six, uh, four, and one against, and no abstentions. Please make sure the uh, the vote 
the way that the votes are listed in the Okay, now it should also be a vote on approval of existing multi-tenant uses as a request, I would understand. Is that correct, Roger? I mean, the commission could vote on all three of them if you wanted to do that, but I think that the, the uh, resolution recognizes that you have three separate okay. special permits, and I've always taken the position that once you have a special permit, everything is part of that special permit. So this, the way this is crafted, you're approving a multi-tenant building, outdoor storage, and um, the... Uh, motor vehicle, or the expansion of the motor vehicle on the back from serving uh, the trucks that belong there to allowing it to serve trucks from the public. It's, if you think it's in there. Okay, that's included then in the, in the uh, first. Just want to make sure we cover what he's requested. Is this vote that we're going to take now separate from the A2 one that we've already done? Well, the, the, the way this, you have to figure out what you're doing on the, uh, the, the one item that is, remains. Uh, you have to figure out what you're doing on the pavement. Um, and then you have the question of, are you requiring on number two? That the person two? that uh, reads, makes a motion does it. Yeah, on 21, you have, you have the A2 survey. And that um, could be taken up under the discussion when we get there, if a motion is made. If I could be allowed just one comment on the Jersey barriers, I'm not sure that Jersey barriers meet the spirit of a buffer zone uh, and perhaps a row of trees that demarcates the pavement on the other side might, might be more in keeping with the spirit of a buffer zone. Well, okay, that, that's fine. The planting of, tree, of the trees then. Right. Mr. Chair, I'll make, like to make a motion that we accept um, no. the application for public hearing. No. <laughs> no we approve. Or we, we approve. We approve the application for public hearing 2878 1654 King Street, Map 13, Lot 9, JEP Realty LLC owner. Whereas the Town of Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has reviewed an application for a special permit for a mixed use, multi use center, including office industrial, outdoor storage, and a motor vehicle repair garage at 1564 King Street, Map 13, Lot 9, Industrial Residential Zones, I 1 R 33. And whereas a public hearing was opened on October 19, 2017, and continued to no November. 2nd, 2017, and whereas the Commission finds that with modifications included in the conditions of approval, the proposal is consistent with the Enfield zoning regulations, and whereas outdoor storage requires a special permit and is li limited to 20% of the rear yard of the facility, and whereas the regulations require a buffer area between industrial zone properties and residential zone properties, and whereas the Automotive use requires both a permit from the Planning and Zoning Commission and a lo location approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Whereas this special permit will bring the site into zoning compliance, now therefore be it resolved that the Town of Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby approves application public hearing 2878 for a special permit for a multi-use center, including outdoor storage in a motor vehicle repair garage at 1654 King Street, Map 13, Lot 9, Industrial and Residential Zones, I2, R33, with the following five modifications and 28 standard conditions of approval. And what we did add, um, looking at the site-specific conditions. Um, there is, a, a, the, the way I listed it might be a little different than the way Roger listed it, but, the, you know, inoperable vehicles must be removed as, as F, and trailers cannot be used for storage um, as G. The height of the storage materials shall be a 15 feet maximum, which is H. I is a maintenance schedule should, shall be shown on plan for the oil water separator. Um, J is that the outdoor um, st store 
storage shall be protected from erosion and you know infiltration with the you know sedimentary control measures k is the depot hill gate shall remain open during business hours and as as l i have the upper hours of operation for the motor repair garage will be monday through friday from 7 a.m to 5 p.m and saturday from 7 to noon i believe and in in terms of ad addressing condition 21 um you know i i'm of the opinion that you know seeing that we did not require a class two you know survey for you know the site survey and that it is an existing condition that they should not be required to provide a class a2 survey for the as built but i think that they need to actually make a, a conscious effort to verify exactly what is there and to locate things in accordance with you know appropriate survey measures not necessarily class a to accuracy but accurate enough to reflect with the conditions that exist second under your resolve there was 11 modifications then all right um, just and, a technical right and you'd yes. want to change the yes. um, you said um, industrial and residential, residential. zones so it yes. should just be all i2 if i'm not yep. mistaken there's no residential on the Did property you change uh, the uh yeah the zone. all right it's a couple and there's places. Two areas. There's yeah. two areas there. That's the first paragraph there. and the bottom yeah. paragraph has, yep. that has to get changed. And then the uh, buffer zone, we still. Well, the way the resolution was, the motion was made seconded, you go back to the uh, condition um, 8B, which says the buffer will be landscaped in accordance with the zoning regulations. Okay, thank you. Right. So I, I guess the item of discussion for that. A2 would be, you know, whether we were going to require the, the total removal of the paving or possibly uh, just a removal of, of a paving along that de de delineation line that would allow for the planting of trees in accordance with the, right. the zoning regulations. And the, the only, I'll, I'll offer one opinion in terms of, you know, basically what, what happens is we have, you know, one a budding residential property owner in this location whereas you know a, the, the previous application had a significant amount of residential properties that a, a affected a, a considerable a, a, a number of households so that and, and you know, the proximity of the households on the other property were very close to the buffered area versus this has a significant backyard area and setback from you know the actual you know residential house that's there so i would be so i would be What's your reading of B, though, Rich? So I think it, it still says that the buffer shall be landscaped and delineated, you know, in accordance with zoning regulations, and the delineation could amount to the removal of the pavement at the 100-foot buffer zone and a, a row of trees be placed at, along that line. That should be the, the, the verbiage there on B, then. Correct. Now, does that include the... How does that apply to the storage that's set forth that's within that buffer zone well that that all it's gets not moved it's not all in oh, it's, okay. it's not all it, it everything gets moved out thank you was there a second to that i seconded okay. the only other question i have is just so we're clear is we're not doing these trees Well, those are the trees, but he said there were pines also that are on him. Yeah, I, I, again, I think that we would go back to our, our regulations. If there are no trees along that buffered area, then th then we will add trees. If there are trees along that buffered area, then we would not have to add trees along that roadway. No, there are trees. The question is, whose property? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think they need to be on his property. And I think wouldn't that fall within B that says the buffer will be landscaped in accordance with zoning regulations? So right. if it's not la currently landscaped, i.e., if there's currently not trees there, he would have to add trees there. That's how I interpret it. Okay, anything further? 
Okay, if you're ready to vote, then, uh, and it's been seconded. So, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, so that means there's no opposed and no abstentions. I think we're done, Attorney Fahey and Mr. Petronella and Ms. Dana. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long process for you and us. <laughs> Good, Roger. Okay. I'll give him a few seconds and uh, we'll get going on uh, Woodlawn Street. Mr. Chairman, that was a short item on the agenda tonight. <laughs> I, I know, that's what you told me. Okay. <clears throat> Why is that your bedtime? Nine o'clock's my bedtime. Oh. That's right. Next week it'll only be eight o'clock though. Or you turn into a witch. Last <laughs> night it was six o'clock. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Secretary, take the roll and uh, read the legal notice. Uh, we did last time. This is a continuation, yeah, right. so just take the roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. Charles Duran. Here. Elizabeth Thallard. Here. Charles Ladd is absent. Nicholas Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. Richard Suzak is here. Linda DeGray will be sitting in on the application. Is the applicant here? Please come forward and uh, please give us your name and address for the record. I, my name is Bobsława Kucharczyk. Uh, I live in Trywoodan Street, and um, maybe my son um, help you. Uh, helped me. Because Sorry, my mom's a little stressed. My name is Krzysztof Kucharczyk. I live on Three Woodland Street. I'm her son, and I want to help her answer questions with the home daycare situation. Okay, would you? Uh, have a piece of paper. Can you give them a piece of paper so they can spell the name for the secretary? Both names. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I guess when you come back and sit down and you explain what uh, your mother is, go is uh, planning to do and uh, Secretary, the commission will be asking questions, I would imagine. Of course. Can you explain what your uh, oh. mother plans to do? She would like to have a home daycare for up to six kids, zero through a newborn to six year olds, uh, six year old, only up to six, no more than that. And it's going to be all the activities would be in the basement and in the backyard. <coughs> the basement uh, was. It's in very good condition. It's very well lit, very well lit, ventilated. It's got two uh, exits. And she has 30 years of experience uh, dealing with kids. She was a teacher in Poland for 15 years, and she's been uh, teaching Polish school in uh, Hartford for the last 15 years. And so I feel like she's very good for the role to deal with kids. OK. Uh Questions from the, the commission? I guess he just answered that children's ages from birth to six years old, and she'd be the only person there? She would be the person in charge, and I would be a substitute, possibly. Okay, so, because it says one employee, that's why I'm asking. Um, if she had an emergency, I guess I am certified as, as, with the same standards as she is. I'm not going to be working it ever, but in case of an emergency, there's a backup. The reason I'm asking is if there were an emergency and they had to take the children out, mm -hmm. uh, an infant or a one-year-old or two-year-old trying to get up those stairs, even though it's just a, a bulkhead, trying to open the bulkhead, get the children out, I think is there you know, a contingency in how to get out of that. 
basement. You're kind of confined. Fire's going to go up. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go down first. So that's that's a concern that we have, is the children being able to get the children out in case there was an emergency. That's, would, would we be able to modify the exit somehow? Or? I'm asking you. I, I, you're that's the property a, owner. I can't make your modifications. That's a good so. Mm. so that you could walk out instead of trying to open a bulkhead mm -hmm. trying to because I've lived in a house with a bulkhead and you're trying to open it it's a metal door you have to open it you're going to have to open that door according to your pictures and then open the bulkhead door and then take the six children out and if some of them aren't wa walking you're going to have to assist them mm -hmm. so that's a concern where you could open a door and let them all go walk out easily instead of climbing stairs. I'm just asking if there's a way to do that. There's about six stairs and it's spring loaded. I don't think it's that hard to open personally, but I, I see the concern though, definitely. It's, it's not, you know, well, doing it today. by yourself with nothing in your hands or having a couple of squirming children is easy, but mm -hmm. it's, it could be a big issue. Anyone else? Luca, yes, go ahead. Can you explain to me um, where people would turn around on your street to drop off the kids in the morning? With, there's a loop around from Star Lane onto Woodlawn and back onto Hillcrest, so there's no need to turn around. You can just go straight through if you need it. Okay. Is there much traffic on that street? I mean, do people zip along? No, not really. Just people leaving for work about the same time that we'd open and close. When I work second shift, so I leave at 5, 5 p.m. and I'm, I work till 5 a.m. So about the same time, so there's no really extra traffic in different hours of the day. Does it ever get backed up around the time? No, there's four houses on each side of the street, so there's really not much traffic at all. It's not a busy street, and we made room on the driveway now. So I moved my car into the garage, and now there's only two up to three cars in the driveway. So if somebody has to get out, because I, I watched the video from last two weeks ago, because we weren't aware that we we're supposed to be at the meeting. I'm sorry about that. We weren't really informed about it, so that's why we're here. And uh, we made the room for safer getting out, I guess. So it's not on the street, even though the street is not too busy. But now there will there will be room to on the driveway. Well, it would depend on what's, what side of the street you came down. One, they'd have to cross the, cross the street, which really you don't know if it's safe or not safe because you don't control the traffic. It's not a one-way street. And really the preference of the regulations is that they have a safe place to exit the car, which would be in your driveway. Mm -hmm. And when I went by, there were four cars in that driveway. You couldn't squeeze anything in there. Not for the last two weeks or so, I think. I think about a week and a half, I cleaned out the garage and moved my car in, so there's less than three every day now. Less than three. So there's at least one or two spots open. Depend with how the, the, then it sort of depend on what side of the driveway you're parking on. And we're always parking against the fence towards the neighbor, so we're getting out right next to the door. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sorry, just wanted to clarify. In either way you exit, uh, enter the street, you're going to pull in the driveway. I know, I know but that, see, that we have to depend on you. We can't, or with the commission, we have to depend on you that it was there. Uh, another question that was raised at the last meeting was what happens in the wintertime with ice and snow coming onto that hatchway? It will be cleared every day, where every time there's snowfall. For sure, and then make a path to the back of the house. I know. Then, then we're depending on an awful lot. Uh, I, I, I didn't bring it with me, but I do have the the regulations for home day, daycare. Does your mother have that? She has all the paperwork. Do you have that? Okay. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. Which regulations do you need? I'm sorry. No, the home daycare regulations from the state of Connecticut. Oh, it's about. Uh, I don't know how many pages, quite, quite a large. I'm just asking you that, that, that you've read it because it oh. is quite extensive on what's required. And 
how many people you have to have working with you, for how many children you have, mm -hmm. and uh, the ages you have, and everything of that type. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have your license from the state already? Yes. You do? Well, we had a home inspection. They were there for over four hours checking everything, and they signed off on it, and they said everything's perfect. So That's really amazing, because uh, the schools require uh, that you have exits on, on grade. Mm -hmm. That in fact, most schools, you have the doors in each classroom on grade. And I, I don't know if you have the comments from uh, the fire department had concerns about it, but they see, he made the comment that he did see that the uh, state allows it in below grade for that, so he wasn't really having a major objection, but he right. himself didn't like the idea of it below grade. Uh, tell you the truth, I don't like it myself below grade because, as, as Linda said, there's a lot of problems with hatchways. And your furnace is right prox close proximity to the, the play area. Mm -hmm. I don't know where your oil, oil storage tank, I would imagine that's near the, the uh, fire, the, I'm sorry, near the furnace, unless it's an outside tank. I don't know what that area has. I don't know. And it, it looks like a very nice, very, very nice uh, place to have the kids, but it is below grade, I don't know. Is it possible that you would consider, you know, upping the age of the, the children that she was taking care of so that they weren't necessarily infants where, you know, where you would have to actually carry, you know, multiple people out of there where, you know, they could, you know, at least scamper up the stairs if you open the door for them so that, you know, like you said, you know, I, I think that everybody has, has a health concern that what we don't want to do is provide, you know, an environment where it, it would jeopardize anybody's life safety. And, you know, obviously children are our future and we, you know, we, we have to, you know, look very carefully and very, you know, scrutinize everything about, you know, children and, and where they're going to be. So that, you know, if there, it, if there was a, 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 an emergency and something did happen, you know, where, you know, people can, you know, more or less get out on their own power would be probably less objectionable than, you know, having people totally relying on somebody having to carry them out of the, the premises. So, um, you know, and, and again, it's, it's, it's just a, a, a suggestion as, as a possibility, and, unless there were multiple people there, you know. And, and you know, it, it's probably very rare that something happens, but if something happens, you know, it, 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 it's not going to, you know, we, we could never forgive our own selves for, you know, putting somebody in that kind of an environment. The, the ages of the kids are supposed to be, there's no more than two kids that are under two years old. And then the other four, if there is that many kids, then they can't be older, older than six, I guess. So from two to six, the four, and then up to two kids that are under two years old. Hmm. And the oil and uh, oil tank and the furnace are on the opposite uh, area, uh, opposite side of the basement. But I understand it's on the same level, and that raises a concern too. Well, yeah, but there's uh, there's. I don't know if it's a fire rated wall between the uh, furnace room and the rec room or or anything about that because I'm I'm not into inspecting houses or another one would be what what uh, alarms do you have a seal detector and a fire detector you do a smoke detector yeah where are they located uh, in the jail so Next to the fire extinguisher, you can see on the There's a fire extinguisher as well. Fire extinguisher. Sir, you would have or to. I'm sorry, sir, have sir, you would have to come up and identify yourself and speak into the microphone. Okay. Sorry, my name is Miroslav Kucharczyk. I am uh, husband of Boguslava Kucharczyk, and the fire extinguisher is on the picture, I guess, because I made these pictures. And uh, over there is the uh, carbon detector, and higher is the fire uh, detector. Smoke. We, we have located a lot of, like a 10 maybe, fire detectors in our house. Uh, 
everywhere in the basement, in the first floor and attic, uh, everywhere, you know, because that was the requirement from the state. They need, you know, like at each level supposed to be a uh, fire detector. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, there is no, we, we don't have any plans to make any changes, like uh, building changes or property changes, because was the, the, the uh, question before, like uh, two weeks ago about that. It looks the same, only changes since little bit in our house that's it like uh, finish the basement you know that there was before years ago there was furnished but damaged and we fix everything and looks like on the pictures looks pretty good right now and everybody like it I guess <laughs> for kids too should be okay thank you yeah. So your hours of operation is 7.20 to 5? That's correct. Yep. Okay. And Monday through Friday. Okay, so there'll be nobody there on Saturday or Sunday. That's correct. And uh, your drop-off area would be in the uh, driveway? Yes, sir. On the left-hand side? Yes, yep. Away from the neighbor. Yeah. yeah. Any further questions, Jenny? I you see your. <coughs> I was just going to look in the in the regs about daycare for us yeah. for child daycare. Okay. Any further <laughs> questions before I open it to the public? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? <coughs> Anyone in the public would speak in favor or against the application? Cla last, okay, I see someone's coming. If you'll move your seats in and if you wish to answer anything that she has, or then it's your opportunity. Ma'am, your name and address, please. Nancy Middleton for Cheryl Drive. Um, I just wanted to clarify um, the drop, uh, the entrance way. Is, are the children coming in through the house or are they coming in through the side entrance going in the, the bulk, the bulkhead? The what bulkhead is, is in the back, isn't it? Correct. Yes. I, no, that would be in the, the exit. I, well, I don't know. No, from through the front door right next to the driveway. Yeah. Okay. Should I introduce myself again? <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Anyone else in the audience would speak in favor against the application? Any questions from the commission? Or uh, I'll ask again. For Anyone in the audience would speak in favor against the application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application. What's the wish <coughs> of the commission? We'll close it. Okay, then I shall close uh, public hearing 2883. My concern is that um, we're just, oh, we'll do I have to wait till he uh, at, reads it before we talk about it? Well, you could either way. It doesn't make any difference. I'll wait. Um, I, fairly recently, we had another daycare that we um, declined because it was in the upstairs. Right. It was on the and, second floor. Uh, right. It was not on the main living area. Right. And it was the same type of daycare. Um, I have a problem with I thought Linda made some very valid points when she um, discussed, you know, in the basement and the bulkhead. Um, I just... Sir, if, if the public hearing is closed. You can... I think that um, while it says it in the book, it meets the criteria, I think that we have to take a very 
hard look at um, children because we're making the decision for that. I guess, I mean, I think speaking to that, I don't, I think that's where the state would come in because the regulations that I see don't specify that it has to be in the basement or on grade or upstairs. And so if the state were concerned with the welfare of the children, I think the state would decline to give a, the permit for that. That's my, I think, I don't know what our authority would be. Well, it's, it, it is by, the, by even the state regulations require authorization by the local board, but. But that would be pursuant to the, the they, regulations they, that we have that don't specify basement. That. Well, I read the paper every day about uh, certain departments of the state where the, it's a special permit, which is health, welfare, and public safety. So you can yep. consider health, welfare, and public safety in your consideration. And the state uh, does require that the uh, town um, approve it, even uh, even if they approve it. And there are instances that we that this commission has turned down applicants that were approved by the state, and the state has gone along with that, and, and because the legislature has said that uh, the local municipality um, can exercise its zoning authority. And if it was a site plan, then, you know, that might be a little different thing if you didn't have anything in the regulations that said you can't be in a basement. With respect to, uh, you don't allow um, um, living quarters in the basements. Um, there's no, and many times we are forced to turn down um, renovation permits where they want to put bedrooms in a basement that has a bulkhead. Um, it's not allowed in your regulations. I guess for me, I kind of feel like with the, the state has the requirements and they do a lot with regard to regulating um, the daycare facilities. I also think it's up to a parent. A parent's not going to put their child, or, or if they feel uncomfortable with it, they're probably not going to have their child go to that specific daycare. So to me, I think that, you know, I understand both sides of it, but in some ways I feel like, you know, parents have that option. And if you don't want that for your child or you're afraid of that, then that's an option you can exercise. So that's just how I guess I feel about it. Oh, I'm still sleeping here. Um, if we don't allow adults to sleep downstairs or have apartments downstairs, how can we justify having two-year-olds down there or babies down there and there's a fire? I mean, it's been one, two, three, three, four people have cited the fact that it is a danger <coughs> and we're here um, to protect people never mind babies in all justification I cannot vote for this mr. chair I'm wondering if um, somehow the bulkhead could be modified to, to make this a, a walkout basement would that would that um change things yeah, but I don't know you'd have to, to have it, the state building code calls for a walkout but it also calls for the egress windows you know the kind that you can like get through mm -hmm. and most basements don't have that and that's quite cost prohibitive mm -hmm. one person and a couple of two-year-olds would really have a problem getting up those stairs and open up that bulkhead. I well, mean, I have a bulkhead in my house. I one, have problems getting out. The one with the uh, uh, last one we, we turned down, our concern was how do you, and this was the second floor, how do you get two youngsters, one in each hand, and open doors or help That's their right. brothers out? And, uh, yeah. It's almost would be almost an impossibility if you got one kid in each hand and, and there's only one of you, because mm -hmm. that's I think all the state requires. Uh, I don't know. That's a, a, they should change it. 
I'd rather see them on, on grade level. And as a state in some circumstances require grade level for kids, then they ought to require grade level, I mean, as on level for all, all the kids. I think I would be comfortable if the, they had a playroom downstairs, but the daycare was actually conducted mostly up on that first level, so it'd be easier to get in and out. Um, I know that they've put a lot of money into their basement. It's, it looks like a beautiful basement sure but, and a great playroom, but to actually allow the children to nap down there because it looks like there's a couple of little cots down there for them to sleep on, that's the part that, you know, you're waking up babies and, and as Rich said, you know, how could we live with ourselves if, God forbid, not that I ever want to see anything bad happen to anybody, but, you know, bad things do happen, and we never can predict that. And to, to have the majority of, like, the sleep area upstairs and just have them down there, you know, playing for a little while and lunch upstairs, whatever, I would be okay with that, but to have this as a their main focused room and staying down there all day, that especially during the nap time, that's that's my concerns. There's the question. Okay. Are you ready for a vote? I don't think there's a motion pending. There isn't a motion. No, there's no motion. Well, there are two. There's, uh, there's two, two draft there's motions. Two draft one if you uh, found that it was something you could support, and one if you found it was something you couldn't support. And, you know, you could consider either of them and um, mark them up as you feel is appropriate. Don't be bashful, people. I can't make motions. I can vote. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to uh, make a motion. Um, whereas the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has received an application for a child daycare to be located in the basement of a residential home located at 3 Woodlawn Street, map uh, 101, lot 81, residential 33 zone. And whereas a public hearing was held on November 2nd, 2017, and whereas the commission has determined that the on-street parking and drop-off is not safe and could cause cars to queue on the street and Whereas the commission has determined that the location of the daycare in the basement with the only direct means of egress through a bulkhead and now therefore be it resolved, resolved, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby denies PH 2883 for a daycare to be located in the basement of a residential home at 3 Woodlawn Street. The, the only thing that I'd like to do is we could we deny it without prejudice in case the, the applicant wants to come back and say they've modified their plan that they would accept, you know, putting part of the daycare at any upper level and, you know, utilize the lower level for, you know, play activities. And if there's any sleeping activities, that all the sleeping activities would occur at, at the upper floor level so that this way you, we would give them the option that they, well, they even, could modify their, their application. Right. Well, well, we can deny it without prejudice. And then all of what you said is great, but they could uh, work with staff to, um, to make it a little uh, less... Uh, use of the basement and a little more use of the uh, main area. I don't area. think I'd want the little kids down there no matter whether it's right. No well, we'll deny what, it. If we deny it without prejudice, but it's still If denied. you deny it, 
Uh, the only thing pro prohibition is you deny it and they can't bring the same thing back with six months. But if you if you deny it and they substantially change it, they can bring oh. it back. So you don't really have to deny it without prejudice. Okay, well then, Somebody I'll just deny it. Motion. Somebody has to second it. Yeah, I know. Are you seconding the motion? Yeah, I know. <laughs> the motion? You people been here long no, enough to know the routine. Did you? Did you? It's, it's, I'm it's, second it. Oh, great. Okay. Now we can discuss it, really. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, the only thing I could say is if you could come back with a different plan where you modify this so that the children aren't always in the basement. I don't have a problem with them going down there for a little while playing, but the sleeping, things like that, being upstairs. Yeah, I understand you sleep on the second, you know, you're sleeping, you're try you've are you got to work a second shift. I understand the noise level for you, but um, just for the safety of the children so that you know, your mom could have this daycare if you could modify this plan a little bit. I okay. wouldn't want to see the, yeah. the uh, we, we don't younger see kids that they yeah. can't walk by themselves or. Yeah, down or, there, just, just for their protection. Well, but that's right, I know. But she's telling them this discussion, and oh, she's yeah. telling them what they if could do. They is could do that. that. That would well, be a great thing. Well, I mean, just them. modify this. We're talking now, yeah. So. Okay. I think that Roger said that they could come back yeah. with a changed they could application. Work with so Roger and the staff. Right. And so. I think that would be a good I thing. I think we could just. I mean, I don't want to say you could never have one. Maybe modify it well, in some way. Well, yes. we really are talking among ourselves, not with them. You can talk with them after. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I can't hear you. Okay. Just saying is, it's. We're supposed to be discussing with ourselves, and oh. now I'm waiting. Now, if you're ready to move the question, you can vote. Yes. Okay. Move the question. Oh. I move the question. Okay. Oh. Thank you. All right, let's be ready then. All in favor? Denial. Oh, that's the favorite denial, right? Denial. One, two, three, well, four, two. five. To deny. Five. Yes. Wait a minute. That was a, it was a negative. Uh, it was a negative. Uh, yes. It was a negative Liz. resolution. Liz. Liz. <laughs> to deny it, Liz. Well, one, two, three, <laughs> seven, yeah. uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. <laughs> Six, uh, six, four. Negatively. Negatively. One against and uh, no abstentions. One against was Mary. Uh, again, what they, what is the discussion is if, if you don't put anybody that can't move and move fast downstairs, it sounds like some of the commissioners would be agreeable to having the daycare there. But not with young toddlers or, or kids that aren't able to uh, move by themselves uh, in the in the basement. But they would be agreeable to having uh, the ones that could move. I'm not saying they all would. It sounds like some would. I, I don't know what the total number would be because you got seven commissioners and and, and three. Yeah, and three alternates. So you sort of be like rolling the dice. But if you work with uh, Roger, there may be possibilities, no guarantees. I would, I would never vote. I'm sorry. All right, vote so there's one, children, but you don't have being to. Being down in a basement or on a second to floor. Play, to play? That's it. All I'm right. done talking. Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. I'm just saying what was said. Maybe we should have a couple minute break. Okay. Yep. Fine. So I can go home. Make a motion. I move we take a five minute recess. Second. second. Very good idea. <laughs> Same time. I'll second that. Did, did we move? Yeah. Oh. Oh.
Call the meeting back to order, and uh, Secretary, take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Elizabeth Ballard, absent. Charles Ladd, absent. Uh, Nicholas Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. Richard Suzak is here. Uh, Altimus DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. And uh, we have a, an individual out there. Can we help you first? I'm with Honey Bay Tam. He's with I'm sorry? I'm with Honey Bay Tam. I'm number 14. I'm oh. oh, that's not for this one. That's not for tonight, is it? No. Um, Honey Baked Ham, we tried to tell them that uh, it was an administrative approval and we'd handle it, but they wanted to come and maybe do a little uh, promo for Honey Baked Ham. I'm sorry, I don't need to talk at all. I, I, I had to come to Boston. <laughs> so <laughs> it, all right, I just saw you out there. Bring some samples. So, um, <laughs> all I can tell you is that Rick Rochelle uh, has enthusiastically endorsed Honey Baked Hams, and he would love to see uh, you guys approve this later tonight. But, uh, Stir, you don't have to hang around, or you could hang around. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's not waste time, but let's get going. Uh, 824 Referral 20 at South River Street. Uh, that's is that in our packet. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the, the just the way it was stapled together uh, was that the, the draft resolution for the commission was on the back and the one on the front was actually the resolution of the council uh, referring it to this commission. So um, I know I found it confusing. Okay. Uh. 28 South River Street is um, a large parcel of land that goes back towards the Connecticut River, and there is a little map in your packet that shows you um, that property. It's quite a parcel, as you can see, and uh, it would be to my way, although it says it's near the uh, uh, the boat launch, it's really a, quite a, a several several away but it, it actually would probably I don't know the, how it, the grade goes down to the river there but it may be a better location than the present boat launch or you could have two boat launches yeah. or you could have it for passive recreation or yeah. people picnic oh, or the, the picnics or anything yes. I think it's an so excellent idea it's a beautiful uh, location and uh, I've been by there several times and I uh, I think it's. It looks like it's a uh, something that's worthwhile the town getting ahead of. Uh, it is down three three lots down from the Barnes boat launch, and uh, it's on a narrow road, so they'd have to provide some kind of parking. But they have plenty of parking at the Barnes boat launch too, so there'd be plenty of room there. Uh, it's a great parcel. Uh, even if you look at the other parcels there, it's uh, one of the largest. Mm -hmm. So the t chair yeah. would entertain a motion, or yeah, and no, I was just going to add. I agree in terms of you know there it, it has a significant frontage in, in compared to all the other properties adjacent to it. So <laughs> it, it definitely has you know a, 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 a good access to the Connecticut River. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to. Uh, make a motion that we approve, you know, 824 referral acquisition of 28 South River Street, the, the Planning Zoning Commission, whereas the Infill Planning Zoning Commission has received an 824 referral for the acquisition of 28 River Street, Map 8, Lot 19, Residential Zone R33, and whereas the Infill Planning and Zoning Commission has reviewed an 824 referral for the acquisition of 828 South River Street, Map 8, Lot 19, Residential Zone R33. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby forwards a favorable recommendation to the Town Council for the acquisition of 28 South River Street, Map 8, Lot 19, Residential Zone R33. Resolved this second day of November 2017. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? I guess we already had it. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Good.
Now, the next one is 824 referral for the acquisition of 33 North River Street. Uh, this, for all of your information, is the, cas the Casket Company building. And, uh, well, Mr. Chairman, the only um, comments I'd like to make on this is that um, you're approving the acquisition of a parcel. Um, and your action tonight doesn't say what becomes of that parcel or any improvements on it. It's just simply a favorable rec recommendation that the town should um, acquire it. And secondly, that uh, refer uh, that reviews of A24s generally confine themselves to whether or not uh, the acquisition is consistent with the uh, goals of the plan of conservation and development. Um, this this uh, parcel is um, very much uh, involved in the uh, proposed Enfield train station um, and so is consistent with the goals of the plan of conservation and development. Uh, also, along with acquisition of property along the river for the enjoyment right. of the people. Yeah. All right. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, for uh, approval of, or an A24 referral of acquisition of 33 North River Street, whereas the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has received an 824 referral for the acquisition of 33 North River Street, Map 7, Lot 12, Thompsonville Village, TV Zone, and whereas the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has reviewed an 824 referral for the acquisition of 33 North River Street, Map 7, Lot 12, Thompsonville Village, TV Zone. Now therefore be it resolved, Resolved, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby forwards a favorable recommendation to the Town Council for the acquisition of 33 North River Street, Map 7, Lot 12, Thompsonville Village, TV Zone. Resolved this second day of November 2017. Second. Motion is made. Seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? No abstentions? Unanimous. Uh, by the way, at the last discussion and on to the page tonight, Maybe they were listening to me, but uh, there's, uh, I brought in the, the uh, last week's uh, On Our Town out of the Enfield Press, and the last chapter, chapter deals with the, the old uh, town fathers, and you'll see that the railroad crossing was on grade. And now they said, if you read it, they were planning ahead for years ahead in the acquisition and better use and so forth. Well, they didn't look this far ahead, <laughs> but it, it, did take, it did take care of uh, their needs for many years. And uh, I just thought it was curious because we just been discussing it. And from what I had found on other things, I thought it was that way, but I'd never seen anything that uh, specifically had said that. We also learned, Mr. Chairman, that Mrs. Church had a favorable visit in her Worcester home. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they traveled all over back then, which is amazing. It, it, uh, people go out west, and, and it's all. I, I love to read that, our town. It's very, very interesting. I'm not pushing for the, in, the Enfield Press, but it, it, they, they publish this every, every week. It's a weekly, and they put this in back in whatever uh, the, usually it's the same day that they come out and this one happens to be 1887 but uh, they put in all the little happenings and they used to have a, a baseball team that used to travel all over and they always tell the record of this, this baseball team it's it's that's an interesting I just record. wanted to note that you brought it in and asked me to study it so I read the entire thing and good <laughs> okay so much for my plug for the Enfield Press in that article, but it was it was funny because we had discussed it. We had discussed it at the meeting, the the, the uh, special meeting. Okay, uh, director, uh, co correspondence. Anything that we have to correspond? Uh, Mr. Chair, I um, had asked to add this to the agenda about the Granny Pods discussion. Um, I saw an article in the Connecticut Law Tribune um, that seemed to suggest that it wasn't too late to have 
um, public hearing on the state's new um, allowing of granny pods and that municipalities may be well served to have a public hearing and determine whether they wish to um, add any other requirements to the state's mandate. And so I wanted to bring that up for the dis for discussion and maybe uh, consider. I had talked to Roger, I know he told me that, and asking Roger if there's any uh, benefit to going along with what the state had or was there benefit to doing it ourselves? And uh, Roger's interpretation was that really we could do the same thing as ourselves and have more control over it than going with what the state had. Right, and I think a, I think a public hearing would be a good a good time to discuss that and get input about, or a workshop well, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Well, how would uh, I had discussed that with Roger too, and, and the councilman had watched the uh, proceedings, and there is a lot of disfavor for mobile vehicles in town. We do allow them for uh, fires and, and so forth. And so it, it is something I thought was worthwhile, but then um, you consider they can, uh, they can add to their house and have something that they can use later, and this is something that has to be plugged in to water. It has to be plugged into everything. I, and I, you, and after, after you don't use it anymore, you don't have it. So I, I don't know, I ended up myself, what are the benefits? I, and they could be sitting there for like 30 years. If, and you think about it, I could have that happen to my house. I'm in my 60s and I say, oh, to my son, oh, let's do a granny pod. Potentially with today's medicines and my history of health, I could live to early hundreds. I could be there 30 or 40 years, and how well would that mobile thing hold up? And then, you know, what do you do with it? Nobody's going to buy it. Nobody's, so, and that company could be out of business that sold it. They're not going to take it back. So, so, I don't know. A lot of issues. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's a benefit of regulations because, I mean, the, the state's, the state's statute does have a lot of instruction and requirements and saying that if you know, the need for the granny pod um, right. ceases, it has, it has to be removed. It has to be, yeah. It's well. not transferable amongst um, family members. So I think that's something yeah. that the commission no, right. should consider. You're right, but you could control that by your own self. You don't need to state the requirements for that. Right, but we would have to, yeah. you know, we would have oh, to yeah. hold the hearing and opt out and discuss it at, yeah. at a public hearing. So, well, yeah, but I, I'd rather discuss it but first, like we're not. doing here sure. at, a, mm. at a workshop and then see whether we want to bring it forward because you have some that may or some may not. Yeah. Right now, after looking at it and, and talking to some other people, to myself, if I had it, I'd rather put an addition on the house like a lot of them are doing, and then I have something after the house that improves the house. But we also yeah. have to consider those that can't afford a full addition yeah, and that this could be I cost know. effective. Yeah. But again, that's something if we don't, you know, if the commission does not like we could talk we could discuss it at a workshop when we have it and put it on a workshop mm -hmm. thing because I mean, we did bring it in and charlie brought it in too yep. i mean i do recognize i think the state has at least the statute itself has rec has um requirements that we would have to meet in order to opt out and it's not just a workshop i think it would have well, to that's be that's why we wouldn't even have to opt in or opt out as, as we could do it ourselves period and use the regulations from the state for that matter but we'd have we'd have to opt out. We'd have to opt uh, out. Have to opt out. It's but there's, there's no deadline for well, opting out, so well, you could opt right. out. It is uh, automatically applying in Enfield until such time as the commission decides to opt out. Well, so right. right now, someone could come in with but, a granny but, pot application. But but uh, realistically, I don't know how many you're going to get because you're going to have to hook them up to public water and public sewer, um, and you're going to have to post a fifty thousand dollar bond. Uh, for the removal of the material uh, afterwards, that's, that's so and uh, you still have to meet the setback requirements and so on and so forth. So when you when you take a really look at it, I'm not sure how many of well, those are going to be it, coming uh, in. But if they do come in and they meet all the requirements within 15 days, uh, they have to be approved. Um, 
but so far, based upon the discussion that takes place on the Connecticut listserv amongst uh, planners throughout the state, there's been very little, um, very little activity with respect to them. The activity is happening with respect to the towns. Or the t once towns find out what it is, they're they're tending to opt out. And if they if they're in favor of doing something similar, then they're writing their own regulations that are consistent with other regulations that you would have. So I mean, I I I, th I think. I, I agree this put it on a workshop and discuss the pros and cons and if we were going to do it ourselves what would be the rate what would be the the requirements that this commission would be would want to have I'm ready for a granny plot <laughs> <laughs> you're ready for one okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea yes to do it in a workshop okay. and can I add one more thing into a workshop sure. can we please I've had somebody else come up to me and talk to me about chickens again. Oh, so can we please I give up. do I give chickens? Up. We actually have a draft uh, chicken regulation, but <laughs> also I just wanted to bring to the commission's attention a heart, uh, an article on Hartford Current within this past month about diseases that are uh, that are uh, you know being traced back to backyard chickens. I saw the, uh, uh, so about a whole half a page or more in the Hartford Current, yeah. which will make available to you so um and i think on on that i remember years a, a couple of years ago there was this epidemic of bird flu and then all those articles came out about how you're not supposed to you know cuddle and hug your chickens and <laughs> everyone was very upset um and I, I know some people that are well, that love their chickens but we so. but the good news is we took the suffield regulations and we did um, um uh, modify them. Uh, both uh, Jen and uh, Raquel worked on them, and we do have some drafts which we were going to forward to you. Then that health article came out, and we kind of went, "Ooh." Well, uh, so um, uh, you know, we will get them out to you, and you can Thomas look at them, and we can workshop. Thomas's daughter them. would be very happy because she's the one that was going mm -hmm. to Suffield uh agricultural school and, and was interested in doing it and poor, I, I don't know what how old the girl is now but on chickens you know there is the request and uh oh, a couple of weeks ago i got a request that came actually forwarded from the mayor uh, that somebody asked him and the question was how many ducks or chickens per acre can you have in enfield um and the, so there is really no answer to that question. Uh, you go to the um, to the thing that in order to have a farm or an agriculture use, you have to have three acres. But then, how do you determine how many uh, ducks or hens or chickens that you could have? You don't. And you because there is a request to go from fifty uh, ducks at the moment to five hundred ducks. Mm -hmm on a parcel and so you really have to get into well what are your um what are your your lot coverage requirements how were the ducks housed what are the so i went to the building department and i said uh, so what are your standards for duck houses <laughs> and uh, they said d-u-c-t houses or d-u-c-t duck or d-u-c-k duck and i'm like no d-u-c-k uh, ducks. So um, there's no answer. It's not like you can go to the book and say, "Oh, you you get you know 150 ducks per acre." Uh, but that is a legitimate question that is on our pending list that an app that a, a resident of Enfield wants to know how many ducks per acre, um, and can I have 500 ducks? I would suggest to the, to any of them until you have a drop dead. Otherwise. It, uh, it's common sense. If you have three acres and put in, I don't know, 25 elephants, because you're breeding elephants, the stench and the runoff and all that, the health department would be involved. So yeah. it's common sense. Yeah. But I also, on another matter, would like to add Manning Road, the end of Manning Road, uh, to the workshop, changing the zone. Yeah, um, I would suggest that due to the fact we have pending litigation on Manning Road that we don't yeah, discuss that's, that that's at this point said. in time. I asked him about that. Oh, well, you had said wait for the next workshop. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I'm just. The, I think I think uh, okay. this commission is uh, 
currently a defendant on action taken with respect to Manning Road, so they perhaps okay. we should Well, we'll go back refrain. to the chickens. If you check East Windsor's regulations, yeah. they do it. Uh, they have a, a formula mm. for um, the – I gave you a copy of East Windsor's mm. chickens one night. The um, They do it by each acre is allowed so many per head, and it's like chickens are – so many and horses are so many and cows are so many mm. and that's how they do it yeah we don't have that so um it's, it's really i mean it really comes down to give us a site plan and tell us where these where these ducks are going to live and how are you going to deal with the runoff and whether you have wetlands or whether you have right. slopes i mean it's it, you know it's, until you until you look at the site plan and you know where are you where are the ducks going to be? You don't know. Did they register as a farm with they the state? No. Are um, they being taxed as a farm? I don't know the answer I'd to that. Check so that I mean, you it's do just it. tough but, for but that's a perfect example of how we get it's asked questions water. and like, how come you don't have an answer? It's a simple question: How many ducks per acre? Yeah, yeah, and, and I think Italian that I think that call, <laughs> you know, causes us or should cause us to think. Okay, if this is a question that the planning rabbits. office is getting more, you know, more and more often as recreational chicken farming comes in, you know, becomes more popular, <laughs> maybe that's something we should address. Every, every weekend. I mean, should they? Wow. Okay. And okay. there was a guy downtown used to have him over here on the corner where there's a... Okay. Okay, we can go on. Okay, I think the uh, next so one. we're done with the ducks and yes. the chickens. Yeah, we weren't trying to duck the answer. We were just... Oh <laughs> it's not all it's quacked up to, to be. be. I'm just going to say, what are you quacking us up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go. Oh, really bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Director, uh, uh, Commissioner's Correspondence... Uh, now that's commission. There's director. Well, maybe we can go out of order and take up the ham. You know, we go from chickens I mean, to we ham. We got too many of those here. Well, I mean, you got the ham guy down here. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have too many. Hams. I uh, think we should allow the guy to have his honey baked ham storefront. Fourteen, number fourteen. Number fourteen. I think we should allow Roger, the planner, to authorize for administrative approval. The uh, honey ham. Well, we're going to have to take items out of business. And oh, so, out of order. Uh, I you, move that we take item number 14 out of order. I second it. There we go. All in favor? Good. Mm -hmm. You want to come forward, sir, and tell us how you're open uh, one week before Thanksgiving and two weeks before Christmas? Two, two weeks before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Take forever. Just come, yeah, just come up and introduce yourself. My name is Mark Damas. I'm from the Honey Baked Ham Company. We do these express stores all over the country i have 42 of them open right now we um the plan is we we open them up and they eventually become full service stores our average unit volume is about a million and a half a store and enfield i do all my demographic studies and you guys are right in the center of where people will come from 30 miles away and it'll be a great store so part of the reason i'm here is it's not hopefully it's not just a temporary store sometimes we open them up for one season maybe it'll be one more year but within the third year, if we're here, if we're here this year and we do another one next year, you, you're for sure going to have a full service store the third year. So that's what we do. Um, unless there's any questions. So it's just bringing the hams from Newington, from up, Newington. up here. So um, we, and as I said, Rick Rochelle would be delighted because he'd have to drive to Newington. There you mm -hmm. go. <coughs> we have a whole process. Our QA department yeah, is probably more strict than your health yeah. department. So Roger, can you? do the administrative approval so that if nothing changes he can just come to the planning staff every year I'd be happy to make a motion uh, when the motion is made okay uh, that's the way we handle uh, car shows and yeah. uh, other things yeah, well that, I'm sure he'd love to come and visit us but you know but, this he, would but, save but the thing is uh, he may not have that storefront available next year because you know he's going to be here for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then he's gone. And I'm sure that if the shopping center can find a tenant that'll be there between January and next Thanksgiving, he'll be in some other location. Yeah, well, what we do is we I already have a lease set up. We pay a, a small monthly fee with the intent of coming next year. And if they get a five-year tenant or something like that, of course we have to move out. So if I do ten of them, that we get kicked out of a couple of them out of the town. Okay, where's 130? 
It's the old Verizon next to, uh, just to the left of Home Depot. The Freshwater Plaza where Verizon was. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, I'm just curious. Okay, can I put forth a motion that we uh, allow um, authorization for administrative approval of 130 Elm Street? Second. Motion's well, made second. Discussion? No, nope, I just got to say, this is a good store. Okay, <laughs> it's unanimous. Thanks. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. You'll be now, open quickly, you'll see. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, Roger, you're on. Uh, one of the things that I gave you um, is a, um, a proposed uh, order of business for the next three meetings. We have, um, and, uh, which I'd just like you to take a look at and move around if you, if you so desire. But we, 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 the office is just um, overrun, if that's a phrase. Uh, I mean, the good thing is. A lot of people want to build, improve, add on, change the use of buildings in Enfield. So you have a, a draft list there where I'm try we're trying to sort out what we can do when. The, um, and that goes into like some of the ones you're accepting tonight, some ones you've accepted previously. Um, here we go. And uh, you asked for a special meeting with respect to Simon Road uh, scanning villages. So um, I know um, uh, Commissioner, uh, uh, you know, Linda is not available on December 14th, uh, but that is a night that you do it. Other than that, you would be doing it like December 28th, which is between Christmas and New Year's. And then people are going to say you're trying to have a public hearing when nobody can attend. So um, um, looking at everything you have going on there, uh, the November 16th, you'd have We're the- We're going to be doing more than one meeting on that scale. Yeah, I know. So but it, so that would, that would probably move over to December 21st, and then it might go to January. Go over to January. Well, yeah. from what they- put in last last time it's a uh, unless they've drastically changed it but the court I thought said it was I thought it was going to be basically the same yeah, it's, it's not yeah. it's basically the same it's basically the same so, uh, there's a lot to it and there were a lot of waivers uh, no I'm just saying you asked for the initial okay. meeting oh, that's the initial said, meeting so to I, be nothing but it um, and so the, the day you already. have is December 14th available on your calendar if you, because you've got so many other things to take up and then it rolls over and you'd have a special meeting after the holidays in January if you wanted to continue it. So you'd start it in December 14th and then you'd roll it over to a special meeting in January. Oh yeah. We It'll be rolled. But at least this December 14th would allow so you to or open it up, have the presentation, here, find out what it is, and uh, <laughs> everybody becomes be becomes, <laughs> becomes familiar with it. Uh, that is the earliest you could take it up because a subdivision uh, that borders an adjacent town had to be referred to the Capital Region Council of Governments, which it was. And, um, and they have again. 35 they have 35 days to comment on it so we couldn't we couldn't take it up sooner than then um, or if you don't want to have a special meeting in December on it we could ask for an extension from the applicant and roll it into January yes. well that's it's whatever you want I, I just did you send it to East Windsor as well as Krog yes yeah, because uh, there was a piece of it, as I recall, the that's East Windsor. Right. Was there, going there is a section of open space that's in East Windsor. I think the first time around, they wanted to. They were thinking about asking East Windsor if they could have direct access from East Windsor's road. That's why I asked. No, you. it's not this time. So that's. I mean, there's some changes, but it, it, it's and it's a subdivision, so. It's, it's not going to be like what we generally Well, have. there is a lot of uh, homework that has to be done on it. There's uh, four storage boxes of materials from when it was approved from Wetlands Commission that we need to go through. 
um, and determine whether or not it's um, it would possibly need to go back to wetlands. Um, that's an open question until we review all of the materials that were submitted to wetlands back in uh, now, what 2000, do do 2009. To, what do we do to a butters? Because the Scanic River Association has trails down through there, I think, or they were talking about them. Do they have to be notified or? I'm not sure if they have to in the subdivision? regulations. Did we get them as a Yeah, we did. You, you have the some you asked for the technical things to be added to your subdivision regulations and we gave you the subdivision regulations no tonight yet. along with the technical requirements on the end of them but um, as far as notification of the butters I'm I'm not sure at this point was required or not well I know they came in and they had some questions about uh, and some changes they wanted along the river so that they had access or uh, it was Right, and and what what staff has to do is we have to know uh, the wetland approval uh, in and out from 2009, yeah. and we have to know what the issues were uh, when it was before this commission, and uh, so that we're able to um, properly. Um, get all the information to you one big one was the escarpments and how they were going to take care of them right one of the things we did ask the uh, applicant to provide this time which they have is uh, we asked for a map of all slopes in, ex in excess of 20 percent <coughs> your regulations actually talk about 25 percent as escarpments but more and more towns are considering 20 percent as um, unbuildable uh, so we asked for a map showing that but you know that has to be scheduled to what you already have coming forward for, for the next meeting is you have the King Street um, uh, interlocking connections uh, application that you had a couple of weeks ago and you postponed uh, then you have the uh, repainting that took place of Plaza Azteca uh, without a permit which is will be coming in and asking you basically to approve what was there <coughs> and what was there or what is no there? i mean what they did <laughs> yeah right. that's i mean the the color that's up there now that they put there so you'll have to determine whether that's uh consistent with your design regulations uh, and standards and then you have the pylon sign for uh for coles plaza that one should that's one. coming forward and then um, number four is the water pollution control facility, uh, which I did get a phone call from the director of public works who asked if we could, uh, you know, see our way to moving that along for them. Uh, that did go to wetlands uh, two or three months ago, and then there was some uh, changes that DEEP wanted. Uh, so. Um, we are sending one portion of what they want to do back to wetlands uh, that was not included in the original approval from wetlands um, and they will have to that take that up but here. this is basically uh, improvements to the water pollution control uh, facility uh, that is along the Connecticut River and um, that is being done in accordance with uh, grants received to the town so okay. We would like to ask the, and we're asking the commission to take that up on the 16th. Then on December 7th, you've got uh, mobile gas station modifications down on King Street. Uh, you got the Riverview shops that are opposite as Nantuck, where they it's presently zoned residential, and it has it has a shopping center there, and then it has re a couple of residential houses. There's a potential sale there and they originally asked for a zone change from R33 to BG. I had a conversation with them the other day and there's no BG anywhere around there. Uh, so I said if they wanted to change it, um, it seemed to me that their best chance of making a compelling argument to this commission would go to BL. So they came in and modified their um, application to go to BL. Um, right, then you have you the a, when when that comes in, 
Cause that's, it is that's, in. That's, they, rather, that's rather confusing. Can you get a, a – it's almost like Petronella's place because I think there's a place way in the back. Right. And there's – the stores along the front from the uh, right there's residential houses in the back and the stores in the front and a prospective buyer has come in and wants to like actually expand the shopping st or or uh, commercial use into the back for the residential portion so um but i thought there was one in the back there anyhow if you go by the old farmhouse is it is is that part of the, is that considered part of the plaza? Because they they come in and exit through there. Um, it is a confusing site. It is so. I, if we get a complete whatever's there. All right. Um, also, um, while we're on that Elm Street, the uh, the uh, the portion of Elm Street that you changed to BL. Um, a year ago is moving forward to the wetlands commission so that will also be coming this way um just for your information uh then we have our totally dodge modifications on enfield street that are that are coming in uh, have come in and we have uh, st uh stop and shop plaza <coughs> with a pylon sign and then at 55 Hazard Avenue, um, you have the, uh, where the napper is in the middle, urgent care is on one side, and then you have a vacant space. So they want to put a primary um, uh, care facility in there with doctors. I have been talking to them. EMS and the fire department have a lot of problems with that dead end parking lot where you go in there for the urgent care and you got to back up a fire truck and there's no place for uh, an ambulance. So um, they have agreed to uh, come in with a modified site plan where they'd run a ring road around the back and come out onto that, on where that side. There are, there is uh, wetlands there, so we'll, we'll have to uh, look carefully at that. It may have to go to wetlands. Uh, so it may not be ready on December 7th, but we've tentatively put it down for that. Uh, and, and then in the end of the December, just before the uh, Christmas holidays, uh, the, the town has a truck wash application for up on Moody Road, which actually would be a double thing. You would have to have an act of protection meeting at 7 and um, a PNZ meeting at 730 uh, to deal with that. And then you have the large area of flexible residential housing tax change uh, that is being put forward by the um, by the uh, company that owns the um, senior residential development on South Road that was approved several years ago. That he would like they would like to change that to market rate housing, um, and uh, so. Uh, this is uh, in support of that, but it would also allow multifamily housing and probably, uh, I think we calculated about five areas in town, There's, they they would have to be over 20 acres. Presently, your regulations only allow multifamily housing, even though you have multifamily housing in a lot of places, your regulations only allow it if you happen to have 60 acres in the same ownership as of some time in the past, uh, and there's only like two sites in town that would meet that requirement. Um, and so if you look at your plan of conservation and development, it says you you support housing, but you really don't in your regulations at the moment. Yeah, Roger, that, that was that was purposely done at the time. Right. So we didn't want an influx, and we did have people at the same time that did come in and ask to have the same thing with lesser things and we did say at the time uh, we would be agreeable after we see saw how this ran to have to consider changing and right so you you know i have to take a look at it but it's it's so it's been drafted we've we've worked with the applicant we've modified it five or six times um so it was coming forward and you 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 go to public hearing and see what you think uh, Mitty weight loss on 786 Enfield Street. 
This is an interesting complex because it's the um, it's next to the bank. Sovereign Bank is there, and then so the parking lot goes right way. up. Then you have the building that has the subway in it uh, there that most of us walk to. Um, and then you have the addition onto that building, and then that's where they would want to put this MIDI uh, MIDI um, uh, weight loss, which is actually classified a medical facility because they have examining rooms and medical staff. So it's a change of use to a medical. And then that same parcel has what the site plan they gave us today says abandoned golf station. And you know, that's now the uh, um, accessory, car accessory place or whatever on the, the radio, corner. Yeah, right, oh, yeah. And then you have the other building in the back, which they, they, they say is like A1 uh, car sales or something, which is now the food, uh, uh, of, of, right. of, yeah. So the site is like three different uses, all that have the same uh, parking and circulation. And the site plan they gave us is from 1986 that doesn't even adequately accurately reflect what is there now. So staff has taken the position that we can't really, you know, we want to be helpful and say, oh, it's an existing building, you're changing use and you're moving a new tenant in. But normally we have a site plan that accurately reflects what is there, not one that says abandoned golf station and A1 whatever. And where the handicap spots are are no longer there, and there's other changes. So we have s suggested to them, and that's why it's not till the end of December. They got to give us a site plan that actually looks like what's there now, and also all of the parking calculations are from 1986. Um, so. Uh, that's what we're dealing with there, but it's kind of interesting because in being out there today, that car accessory place on the corner, they're actually installing stuff in the parking lot, and I'm not sure that whatever was approved there was meant to do that. Um, so uh, they have people are going in there buying stuff, and then it's being installed in the parking lot there. So that is an issue that needs to be uh, looked into. So hopefully we're going to be able to work with the applicant and it'll be ready by, by the uh, end of December. So um, also what's coming up is we got a 90, 90 pages of uh, drawings in the office for the Wetlands Commission on the Metro Park North down on King Street for two, that, that site which I mentioned. And there's a lot going on with with the other commission, so it's going to be a busy, a busy time, uh, which is all good. And then finally, I'll just end with: I gave you the um, the procedures um, and the forms that are used by the office. I know there's been inquiries about that, so you have some sense. Uh, it's all a work in progress. We're continually trying to uh, come up with. Uh, you know, uh, streamlined systems, but one of the issues that we have is um, in many instances, either you, um, e e either you're compliant with the regulations or you're not. We have a situation on Enfield Street right now where a gentleman wants to uh, sell his, bus his automobile business but the state statute, and it's like, well, it's a non-used car place. Why can't we just, that's it, change it? But you have a state statute that says that you can change, you can change, transfer a license to, and it defines the relatives you can transfer it to. If not, you, you start the process as a location approval. That's, is, it's, that's in a BL zone where automobile uses is not allowed. So we have to start with the notion of, okay, well, the use might be grandfathered then because there was no effort to abandon it, but they do have to go to Zoning Board of Appeals uh, and have a, you know, have a site plan, and the Zoning Board of Appeals, in looking at that, is free to make changes to the site plan. Um, and so, you know, these are things that 
when the public comes in, it's like, hey, I just want to sell my business. It's always been a car place. Why can't I just continue to be a car place? Um, so, you know, a lot of what we do is trying to educate the public that the rules and regulations are made by the state st by the state legislature a lot of times i mean how you know how they get translated into your local regulations is one thing and you know the processes that we have but um you know people want to know well, how long does it take to get an approval and you know you can get an approval in three days or you can get an approval in nine months i mean there is really no way to say uh, so what we basically say to folks is if you tell us what you want to do with a narrative and you give us a sketch then we will give you a road map and say this is what you what you have to do so uh, i hope that you find that helpful and we we would like to get your comments on it and anytime anybody has any suggestions as to um, you know how the you know how the process can be can be streamlined and I will say this Enfield is one of the few towns that th that the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Wetlands Commission's regularly meet twice a month and many towns they only meet once a month so um, the good news is for applicants if you get postponed in a meeting it's only two weeks it's not a month so but we've always been that if they're ready and they have everything in line right that we'll have a special meeting for right them and so, so that just leaves us with do you want to make any changes to this proposed schedule of when you're going to hear things and particularly do you want to have a meeting on december 14th or you want us to ask the applicant okay, for an extension ahead. so you can take that up in january well, I, you're going to end up with multiple multiple meetings with that anyhow, and the, 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 it would be best to get everything out on the first meeting because you probably won't even get a chance to ask questions the first meeting. I will say, say though, that that's getting close to holiday season, and um, well, yeah, you with, with such a large just, application, perhaps it, you know, having more commissioners available to consider it. In well, the first instance, the first time it, come, time it comes around. All you around. have to be able to do is say that you've read the read or watched or listened or. Well, I don't think you'd want to take it up after the 14th. I mean, the no, 14th, the 14th, the 14th, 14th was late. they could make their presentation. Everybody would know what they're presenting, how it might, how it might be different from what they had. If it isn't different, whatever. And then uh, you would continue it in January. Uh, so then you would have, you know, probably a month to consider their their presentation, develop your questions, Take notify staff time, what they are, and so five forth. Five six meetings, unless they've changed things. It took about five or six meetings, and there's only two of us that were here at the time, so the rest of you are new. So you're going to need those five or six meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, Charlie Lang? Yeah. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie was here. Yeah. Charlie was here. Yeah. So there, there's, there'll be three of us anyway that have been, will have some idea what they're doing, but if they've changed it. Well, are we staying with it or not? I mean. Uh, Stay with the 14th? Through the 14th. Okay, we're staying with the 14th. Okay, uh, over. applications to be received. Well, you already done it, so yeah. we're all set with that. But that's Parsons Road. Oh, so we're all set with all that that's on the back. Yep. Uh, unresolved issues. Anybody with the. Uh, well, we already talked about the chickens, sir. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I gave up on chickens. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not giving up. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're the young girls to take it over because my my girl graduated a long time ago. Uh, any other business to come before us tonight? Oh, one thing, and I I don't know if I raised it before, but we, it seems they can find different ways to cause a problem, but 
uh, my, my lot's package store, or what it used to be, my lot's. That dumpster's out on the front of the building now. It's out front. Can you get them to get it back? Or Which one behind? is my lot's? It's the uh, one that's a multiple roof deal the one that, that you keep the building warehouse. forever. It was supposed to oh. be a package store. I yeah, mean, it's I don't not. Know what it's, it is. it's not open. Oh yes, it is. It is. Yeah. No, it's been shut down by oh, for a okay. long time. I mean, it was supposed to be a package store. They totally right. took over my lots. No, the uh, the building fire and zoning um, departments. We all we shut that place down months ago because of. Um, well, every once in a while, they're out there. And, they and put in a I know they 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 uh, and they are uh, going to any day now. Submit revised plans. For well, they the, got a dumpster so, sitting out on the. So they should move the dumpster to the back because it's a construction dumpster. I think there's a bigger dumpster, dumpster out yeah, back. Yeah, it's I, a I it's a it's a construction dumpster. Well, they got a little dumpster sitting right on Route Four, <laughs> right out on the main road. Okay. It's a nice attraction. Uh, let's see what else has gone down along there. You go by up there. What have you noticed? Nothing, really. Nothing. There's nothing. Okay. Okay. As far as I know, 11 Enfield Street, um, was, which you approved, was that, uh, you know, the, the place that used to be a liquor store with the liquor sign yeah, yeah, pointing right. down and it was going to be a coffee shop. Uh, the, the, they have abandoned those plans. Oh. <laughs> but he, the doctor bought the property. Right. He bought the property um, and now he's looking for suggestions as to what he could do with it. Doctor's office. <laughs> um, I saw public hearing signs in front of the Pride Station. That's what yeah, I yes. And matter of fact, the gentleman came here tonight uh, thinking that it was on because he saw those same signs. Um, they have applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance, uh, so the signs are with respect to that. It will be on the ZBA's agenda at the end of November. And they've applied to reduce the area that they would need uh, to come in. Um, so that's what that's about. Okay, um, I just saw them, and I was like, yeah. and I didn't see, and I just thought about that, and I didn't see it. Right, and so know. what I've what it, what we've done with respect to that is we did mail out to the uh, email out to the commission a list of all pending applications for every commission, plus preliminary yes, things that, that we're was, working on. So that kind of gives you a heads up on those that things. That was a lot of reading. Um, yeah, well, if you want to come upstairs and look at all the plans that are that are piled everywhere, uh, you know, there, there's, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on. It's good. I mean, and you don't have another secretary up there. Yeah, uh, well, um, no comment on that. I know, I know. Okay, motion to adjourn. Keep me out of trouble. <laughs> One other, there's a, a sign that needs to be removed, and that's the old sign for up the old gun shop. It, this, they still have their sign on the. Last location. I thought that was somebody was going in there. But that another, not another gun shop. No, no. We have a motion on the table. Yes. That's been seconded. <laughs> oh, and seconded. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second. <laughs> All in favor? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This